Hello and welcome to the deepest dive from Mid Max. I'm Ben Hansen, joined by Sergio Vasquez. Hello, Jeff Marquiafava. We tried to lock the door and he made his way yeah. through. Yep. And then we have Kyle Hilliard. Why, why weren't you saying anything? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. This is a podcast too. A bunch of silly he just, boys. He just here. comes here and sits there for eight hours a day mm-hmm. if we don't podcast. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Uh, what this is, is it's a community game club where we're playing through all of Chrono Trigger. And you know, like those those hacks on the internet, other than the wonderful Mid Max community, but there's other hacks that just like stream playing games. <sighs> Forget that. Why do that when you can play them and then talk about them in exhausting detail? Yeah. That's what the Deepest Dive is all about. So this is going to be the middle chunk of Chrono Trigger. This is everything from reaching the end of time for the first t- time uh, up until... You reach Enhasa in the Kingdom of Zeal. Basically, when you see the floating islands, that's where we're stopping. We won't spoil anything beyond that. We know a lot of people are playing along with us, which reminds me, thank you to everybody that's playing along with us because yeah. there's always a drop-off throughout like the Game Club discussions. Uh, this one was the most consistent one we've had yet. There is so much feedback nice. on the second chunk. and like, Who wants to talk about the middle section of the game? Us, by got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I like the middles. Yeah, it's a good, juicy middle. Yeah. Um, so, thanks for everybody that wrote in. Uh, we are pulling this feedback from Patreon, patreon.com slash binmax 2 ends If you support us in any tier, then you can leave a wonderful comment that we'll read here. If you're watching the video version of this and you want to listen to this because it's way too long for a video, um, you can support us at the $5 tier, even just for a month, whatever you want, and then you get access to the exclusive audio feed that's filled with the audio versions of this, Max Spoilers, a bunch of other fun stuff, a bonus podcast we do every week called MinFax where we really take a deep dive into min-max, which is strange. <laughs> um, anyways, I want to also set this up ahead of time. I noticed that we set out, sent out like a poll on Twitter about like, hey, where are you guys? Are you caught up? Are you not caught up? If you're trying to play along. I know anecdotally, like two of my friends bought Chrono Trigger and made it to about the stopping point of the first one. They're like, oh, I just can't keep up. Yeah. You know, so I feel like for the finale, the grand finale of everything with Chrono Trigger, we're going to have two weeks for that. So that's going to be airing on February 12th for talking about everything on current triggers. So you have plenty of time to catch up. If you've been on the fence, jump on in. The water's fine. Come play with us, right? Um, so we'll have the post up on Patreon looking for your comments on the entire game uh, on February 10th. Mm-hmm. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but 10th, look for the post there, and then we'll have a big celebration about all things Chrono Trigger. All right, my little friend lords, ready to dive into the mm-hmm. big discussion about this? I get that. God, I wrote down. Mm. Friend yep, lords. Yep. As a I see it written down. <laughs> he there. woke up in the middle of the night, sweating. Oh, I got You Trend underlined lords. it, bolded it, <laughs> italicized it. Uh, okay, I've seen a couple comments, which is interesting, about people being like, "Yeah, Chrono Trigger's good, but how about you do the real one? How about you go ahead and do a deepest dive on Chrono Cross?" Mm. Which I find fascinating because I love Chrono Cross, but I didn't expect so many defenders to come out of the woodworks when you were talking about what I think the world sees as the better game, which is Chrono Trigger. But Imran Khan, in particular, a friend of the show here. Hi, Imran. uh, He writes in and says, hey, I wanted to comment on, uh, for the last episode, the observation that Chrono and his friends are causing paradoxes that theoretically should not have enabled them to go on the journey in the first place, specifically that defeating defeating Lavos should have erased a recording of Lavos ending the world from playing, thus they never would have learned about it and defeated Lavos. Actually, this is something that is barely touched upon at the end of time and then expanded on in Chrono Cross. It's kind of a long explanation, but the idea is that Chrono and his friends aren't traveling along a timeline. They themselves became the timeline. So all the mucking around (laughs) time they do creates different effects within the time period and causes echoes backwards and forwards. Everything they do, from watching the Lavos tape to defeating Lavos to fighting Magus, exists outside the flow of time because they're guiding it rather than existing within it. Chrono Cross takes this a bit further by showing that all this time manipulation, accidental or otherwise ended up causing reverberations that resulted in unforeseen consequences. But I suppose that's a different deepest dive. Mm. Now, this is so wild because it really made me think. I played Chrono Cross before Chrono Trigger. Mm. And so for me playing Chrono Cross, I was like, I know that there's like some like cameos and kind of light Easter eggs. You know, there's a character named Glenn who uses X-Strike, stuff like that. It's like, okay, I see the connections here. Um, But I don't remember any of that stuff about tying back to the timeline. And so yeah. I wonder well, if, if it would be interesting to replay Chrono Cross after Chrono Trigger. Not saying we're going to do the deepest dive on yeah. it, but I mean, finding I Chrono and Marl and Luca, like, that's like Easter egg. Like, you have to go out of your way to talk They're to like them. They're like standing and, in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> right? I've seen that scene. scene. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. isn't that, that's not on the main path, right? Um, I think it's pretty close because that's, okay. that's a beach where you warp back and forth because do you know the premise of Chrono Cross, Jeff? No. Uh, with Chrono Cross, it's, it's not. It's Chrono Trigger, but Motocross. They're, they're <laughs> exactly. they're Sponsored by Monster yes. Energy. They really take the Johnny section from the first chunk mm, and expand it into a full game. Now. You it's, know that that's the thing I'm most section. curious about. 
<laughs> yeah, they're going for that Jet Moto market. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, with Chrono Cross, instead of like time travel, it's alternate dimensions. So there's like two parallel realities, and then you're warping back and forth between them, which is funny because it's like the name of a town, and then you warp to the other world, and it's called like like the name of a town is Termina, and then you go to the other world, and they just call it on the world map another Termina. Everything's just mm. like another, another, which is a very fun way for <laughs> the right. entire thing. Mm. Um, this is a weird note to start the game club on. How dare you, Imran Khan? This is insulting. No, what it's very helpful, doing? but I think it overcomplicates the plot of Chrono Trigger. You know, like, that's something that somebody else wrote in about here. Um, yeah, I don't... It's funny. I, I Maybe I'm, like, not giving it its due, but, like, yeah. I, I'm mostly just thinking about the sort of interpersonal character interactions as opposed to the larger story. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. really get, like stuck in the muck of like, oh, wait, hold on, this doesn't make sense. I'm more just like interested in like what's going on between the, my group and the people they're interacting with, you know? Yeah. I, I think I think most of the story does make sense, though. It's just it's just that layer of time travel that never makes sense in any time travel yeah. stuff that and you they, just kind they, of have to not think about the paradox too much, even if it is explained as Imran says it is. Right, right. And it's like, it's nice that the characters aren't bogged down. In it. It's a little bit like... The approach from Jumper, not Jumper, Looper. Looper. Yeah. <laughs> Different films. Uh, yeah. Jumper is to Chrono Cross what Looper is to Chrono Trigger. Anyway, so Jared Natsis <laughs> writes about it. And he says, hey, some RPGs suffer from having plots that are very busy and complicated and only tenuous, tenuously tied together. But despite being about time travel, which is a notoriously messy concept to play with, Chrono Trigger's plot is extremely streamlined and simple. You discover you can change the timeline, and you can use that knowledge to choose to save the world. You think stopping Magus will do it, but you learn Lavos is more than just a creation of Magus. Then you learn he has been buried under your world for literal eons. Everything you do serves as a central narrative. It is like a good reminder. I think what's something that's so smart about this game's story is, yeah, you're going through different eras, meeting different characters, and then it always pivots back towards... Yeah, but seriously, Lavos is a serious problem. Like, <laughs> please pay attention to this. And something else that I really love, and maybe it's, I don't know, some people could see it as a cliche or something, but I love that also every conflict in every era, it ultimately culminates with like, yeah, no, we're not the bad guys, really. It's this Lavos guy. Like, it's just like this beautiful, subtle mm. redirecting of, hey, this is your main target. Also, you should have sympathy for every living thing in this world because it turns out, Outside of maybe like Ozzy who can burn in hell. Like everybody <laughs> yeah. else, you know, is like, okay, I kind of see where you're coming from at this point. You know, oh, yeah. it's a nice message. Well, even like like Magus is a little bit like, well, I tried to summon him, but uh, yeah, like, he, yeah, he's the one who I have like maybe the least sympathy for, but I think his character is maybe a little bit like not, we haven't gotten to maybe his backstory quite yet. Yeah, yeah there's that more could to be. him, yeah. Yeah, but it is, I was very confused about that because... You beat Magus, and I know we're all over the place here, but that's the point. Um, and then he does say, like, because Robo, for me at least, was saying, oh, this is the point where Lavos originated. Mm -hmm. And Magus is like, no, 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 he was, he's been beneath the earth for so long, I was just summoning him. Yeah. So it's that confusing thing of, like, oh, so he's not guilt-free. I don't know what he meant by summoning him, but Magus also has a tone of, like, you fools, you distracted me, now mm -hmm. everything's going to hell. But you were trying to get him out of like you were trying to summon you were we were distracting you from the part where you were trying to summon Lavos to, you know, not do cool things, I imagine. <laughs> it's implied, I guess. But yeah, I don't know if it goes into that later. Like yes. so much of this for me is like I haven't played this section for twenty years, you know, so it's all just a blur. Like this is basically uncharted territory for me. It feels that way for me too, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you just played it not that long ago. Yeah, I know, but even there's little things like uh, Lavos's origins, where I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about this." You right, know, like he's right. basically an alien, right? I mean, yeah, like an asteroid flying through space that happens to land on Earth and sits there. Like that element of Lavos, I just, I totally forgot about. Right, yeah. Dominic Sachoki says something I really enjoyed about Chrono Trigger is how so many small characters have developed personalities. Massa and Mune are there for a minute, but they get a good amount of characterization. Ozzy constantly runs away, leaving everything else, everyone else to do his bidding. The strong writing keeps the story interesting, even, the, even when the next objective is a little confusing. There's also the scene where Lavos drops through the sky as the meteor that kills the dinosaurs, essentially. Yeah. There's so much palpable dread and anxiety in that scene that it really feels like the end of the prehistoric era and the dawn of the next age. Yeah, I completely forgot about that weird attempted 3D scene of like Lavos flying through space for so mm. long as the camera's like whirling around yeah. the stars. Like it's cool to see Square like pushing the Super Nintendo then, like that. There's also like that really far out shot and it's like they're supposed to be represented by the little dots. Like yeah, what I don't was know. that? I don't know what <laughs> that was. Like, I guess that's Chrono. He's green. He's glowing green now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Eric Reed has a very important question. 
He says, does anyone else find it weird that the game's dates use BC and AD? Does that mean Jesus exists in Chrono Trigger? <laughs> <laughs> it point. is very Question. confusing. I don't know exactly. Look, you know, the works. third section, maybe someone joins yeah. your party. Oh, uh, no, that's one thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember, we but there's so many characters. Jesus. <laughs> well, you I, I mean, you could name anyone Jesus in your party. So yeah, I've sure. named all my characters Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of the game so far in this middle chunk? Uh, I am still enjoying it. I'm still you know like very interested in where the story's going i think it the combat got a little more annoying in annoying. this section and it's and i think it it got better towards the end as you as you started fighting more bosses i think yeah. some of the boss battles got more interesting but there was a lot and i think it, it i think it was because i was i crammed a lot into you know a couple nights but it, yeah. it the aspect of the combat where it's like the secret to this fight is use wind attack or just right. use a fire attack and and that is going to completely decimate an enemy that otherwise is going to be very hard. It gets a little more puzzly even like the Magus fight and stuff. It's like a weird tone of just, and I think a lot of fights throughout this, the boss fight's like, okay, just sit back, wait, let's well, try and, and learn the patterns and those here. Are, those are the more interesting ones but okay. there, there's a section where you you were going through the forest and there were like Giant trolls with hammers, yes. and they just suck. But well, I don't know but what. The, how did you defeat them? You use fire, and that burns their hammer on the first hit, and then they're super yeah. easy. There's someone and, who tells you yes, that. Like, and, oh, and really? that yeah. is that is the other aspect of it, where there's just an NPC who will tell you that. After which, you know, you just do the thing that they told you, and then it's and then it's much easier to get through. So you guys and both that, had Luca in your party. Because I, I no, have I, to I would I would switch her in whenever oh. those mm. you know enemies were coming up. And, yeah, and so that's that's kind of the annoying part. And just there were there were other places where you're kind of going back and forth through dungeons, and it's just a lot of kind of the same configuration of enemies. You know, and yeah. it's the trip and, to Frog's house is consistently frustrating to me. It's yeah. just like annoying oh, really? and time consuming. Yeah, just and going through the just, full journey or just like the little forest section? The little forest section, walking into <clears> his house. Like right. You have to do that a, a number of times and I always was just always kind of like, Ugh, okay, yeah, here I, we go again. I think, it, I think it comes from like this game kind of settling into rhythms a little bit when it comes to when it comes to the actual gameplay because I think in the first segment I was a little bit more excited about the way the combat is presented but and I, I also mentioned that like it, it's presented really well but like there's not a whole lot of like the, the fact that people are moving around the screen doesn't really change too much of how you approach things just like when you do certain attacks but I think here there's a lot more like, I mean, even things as basic as when you're walking around, the the whole idea is like, oh, you can avoid fights if you want to because they're always on the screen. But especially later on in like that the tower that you're climbing, there's a lot of forced encounters that are like, oh, like surprise, yeah. here's a bunch of things, which are, which is cool kind of the first time they do it. But then like as you're trying to figure out, okay, well, this switch opens this door, so I have to, now I have to backtrack mm -hmm. a little bit. And then there are places where you'll fall through the ground and have to like do another section again. And so oh, yeah. the second time that they come out and surprise you, you're kind of just, oh, I just want to get... I just want to get through this. Yeah. And they also start chaining enemies in this section, too. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, now you'll just have four waves of enemies, which is, a, I think, a fun twist. I yeah. think so many things with this game is just kind of like a fun twist on the JRPG formula. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree that that can be slightly annoying to fight the same wave of enemies, but you compare that to, I think, average JRPGs from this era with the random encounters, and it's like, it's just still night and day. Sure. I still yeah. prefer it, for sure. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God, yeah. yeah. There, are just, there are just sections that, like, they take a, a, a thing that is an inherently clever. Like, I... I when he, uh, you're trying to get to Ozzy and he's like pulling all these switches to basically like do like that stuff is fun. But then you get to the point where it's like there are all these traps, right? Like yeah. all these pits. And the first time you fall through and then you see the safe point and you're like, oh, cool. Now like, here's a safe point and you have to fight the safe point. Like that's a that's a really good joke. Right. Uh, but then like, you know, the fact that you fall through five of them or at least I did because I didn't know where they were. Uh, like the fifth time you're doing that, it's like, OK, this is this is way less funny now by the time I have to yeah. go here and then climb back up and do it all over again. Like did they. You did you figure out the solution? They change. They go clockwise. So every time you fall through, it's like the next. Oh, no, really? like that, that was yeah, my problem. It's just like basically, I just fell in every one of the holes. Sure. No, <laughs> so yeah, like, I don't. I did too. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So like, the, so it's a, it's like fun. Oh, this is a cool thing. And then like they do it again and again. And so they, like I said, they take some some clever ways to have en like enemies yeah. fight you. But they, the fact that you can repeat them a lot, kind of you know undercuts that. It's, right. it's the intro of Phantom Pain. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Well, <laughs> Christopher Powell writes in saying, hey, in Megas' castle, why are there two Donkey Kong ripoff sections where the enemy is rolling down the stairs and you have to hang onto the ladders to get past them? Seems super random to have in this game. I thought that was fun. Uh, Did you guys also think of Donkey Kong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, for sure. Uh, the part where you're chasing Ozzy and he keeps opening the holes in the floor may be the most annoying video game moment in a long mm -hmm. time. And, like, it might go on a little bit 
too long, maybe just because I fell in so many holes along mm-hmm. the way. But like it does, I think, better than any enemy in the game, outside of maybe Lavos, I guess, if you're really invested in the story, make you hate Ozzy so much. Mm-hmm. Like the idea of him constantly running away and then it's basically a gag of like, oh, and then he's frozen, you can drop down the pit and he dies. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like it's such a fun weird different thing for for this area yeah, i i think that i mean that part peaks so i think when he when he's like pulling the switches that will like change the the little treadmills or whatever and when yeah. you get to him he's like oh that didn't work <laughs> oh no and then he just runs away yeah uh, do you guys have the auto option is that in everyone's version of the game i think mm. it might be in the steam version but no i'm not using yeah, that the auto the version. Version. Yeah. yeah it's nice for the the just the little piddly guys like i usually just yeah and, turn is it that, right? and that yeah. that's that's my bigger problem with it. I I like all the when it's kind of telling a story like that, but it, it's just when it's like, okay, this group of specific enemies is two sorcerers and three skeletons for the fifth time, you know? And right. it's, it's like, I already know what I'm going to, I am I know the exact moves I'm going to do in that. It's, you know, it's not challenging me. It's, yes. it's not interesting. It's just two minutes that I have to get through in order right. to continue. Right. I, I will say though that like, I think, I, you guys were mentioning that, that it's different from like random battles and I prefer it. I think that even as annoying as it can be sometimes, I think this is kind of the game pushing like a sp- very specific leveling curve. So I haven't had to grind at all. I haven't had to like, okay, yeah. I, I'm not going to yeah. be able to beat this enemy. Like I, f- I felt properly prepared for every encounter. And I think this is the game maybe like realizing, oh, if we don't do these encounters, we don't push these encounters on them, they're not going to be strong enough to fight Magus or yeah. like whatever comes and ahead. And what are we supposed to do? Lower the stats on Magus? Get out of town. No, yeah. we're going to like, well, because I think they're relying on a very, like RPGs rely on a very like kind of sometimes yeah. exploitable, but like specific curve of like, you need to be this level to fight this guy. Right. And so I think they're like, I think they maybe realize at some point like hey we need to have in, in order for them for us to be able to follow this curve we need to have more encounters here yeah. yes jared natsa says i love in this section when you get to talk to enemies there's a freelancer in the denodoro mountains whom you can walk right up to and interact with they say quiet you'll ruin our ambush oh and then you just yes. like go down the yeah. ladder yeah. and then like, they that. ambush you <laughs> that's very good it's very paper mario right of just like yeah. having these glimpses and there's a lot of other like fun silly things it's like oh uh, there's a sleeping orc guy and then another guy like throws a rock to wake him up mm-hmm. or like just the idea that rocks I think in the prehistoric era are like secret enemies that suddenly they like pop up and you have to fight them too yeah and there, there's one like super dick bird who the bell bird super dick. I I don't know if it's the bell bird but he he's the one who like you come in on the like the east side of the map and he's yeah. throwing rocks at you and pelting you with them oh, and then yeah. you get to the other oh, side sure. and he's still pelting you with them <laughs> yeah. and it, it takes you a surprisingly long time to actually get to him to right that's him. like the one that kind of looks like the samurai the ambush one mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like the bellbird is just the dumbest enemy and like there's multiple variants of it. it's just a bird holding a giant bell like is this some weird trope <laughs> i'm not aware of i don't understand what it's playing yeah, you know of. the bellbird oh yeah uh, bob buell says as far as i can tell there's only one creature that appears in Three time periods: prehistory, Middle Ages, and the present, oh, and looks exactly the same in all er- in all three. Do you guys know what it is? Uh, no, I don't think I do. Do you guys? I don't know. Is it's it the, the bell bird? It's the bell the bird. Bell bird. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's those weirdo looking spinning kilwallas. One shows up as the piano player in the bar in the present day. Mm. There's one on top of the mountain, just hanging out in the Middle Ages, the one you have to talk to over and over again to get the thing. And they're all over the place as enemies in ancient caveman times. And they've not evolved or changed as far as I can see, other than being hostile to us in the prehistoric times. Mm. Odds that these are the only creatures, NPC, anything that do this, makes me think that this is done for a reason. Uh, Maybe they're a missing link or something. Uh, There is a, I forget your name right now, I'll get to it in a bit, Uh, but there's a Chrono Trigger expert that posted like, well, there's another enemy that's all over the place, but but I cannot reveal for spoiler reasons how that works. So Mm. thank you for being the expert. I'll get to your name in a little bit, I promise. Surreal, did you have an overall take on this section? Are you still enjoying it more or less than you expected? Yeah, I think I'm still enjoying it overall. Like I I like that it is as playful as as it is as an RPG. It feels like it, 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 like it came out in like what, 94? 495. Yeah. So it feels like it's very knowing about like RPGs ahead of it and it feels a lot it feels like a lot in a lot of ways it's like a response to you know other RPGs of like oh you know the the enemies are always on one side and you're always on the other so let's mix that up a bit. You're always kind of like bogged down in like exposition so let's kind of make it a little bit more active and have you like move the story along a lot more quickly and make it less about like oh it's the end of the world and 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 more about like let's have all these like self-contained narratives that are part of this larger thing. Right. Uh, so I, I I'm still enjoying it and like I think the, I think maybe the weakest section for me, like narratively, is maybe the the prehistoric era. Um, but other than that, I think you know, I think it moves along so speedily that like, it's not like the deepest plot in the world by far. But like it, 
I think it does enough to like just the fact that it keeps you going basically all the time is is to this game's benefit. And so like the only times where I was like kind of frustrated were the times when it was kind of slowing you down. Right, right. And in terms of like, you know, commenting on other games in that era, it's interesting thinking about like what we learned about how it's largely the Final Fantasy VI team. And so like when that team is so intact moving from the previous project, it does have such a playful tone. And I wonder if it's just developers are experts on designing for the Super Nintendo at this point. So it almost feels like it has like the playfulness or like iterative nature of a sequel, even though it's an mm. original IP. Yeah, like they're spoofing their own work that they sort of right. created. You know, which yeah. is cool. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's I'm glad that they're able to sort of look at because because RPGs before were so self serious. Like right. Chrono Trigger feels like like a lighter take on it, which I yeah. which I really love. Yeah. Like that's one of the things replaying it now that stands out the most to me is the humor. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even just the the silly little things of right where we stopped last time at the end of time when you're unlocking magic and you go and talk to the little white thing that's yeah, in all yeah. the eras or whatever. Um, and he's like, all right, to unlock magic, run around this place three times. And it's like, oh, this is stupid, but that was all a lot right, of fun sure. on a touch yeah. screen, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how is this stupid iOS world going for you? It's, it, it's, hey, look, I'm playing it. <laughs> You're so... You can play it on the go. I mean, yeah. it is, I mean, just for our purposes here, it is really handy for me to be able to just like play an hour here and there, you know, or like you could have been playing the DS though, man. Oh yeah, DS for sure. But I played the DS one. I don't know. I yeah. want. I wanted to play the mobile version because it, I just wanted to be a like a weird voice among you guys getting to play a good version. Mm. <laughs> hey, yeah. I have the auto battle, so you know. Oh, I finally saw some animated cutscenes, by the way. Yeah, so that's that yeah. nice. I think yeah. First one I saw was it Ayla? I'm trying to remember. For me, it was yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'm glad we're on the same page then. And why wouldn't they include the Robo one then? I don't know. Is I it I possible we it? both forgot it? I, maybe. It I don't seems know. so weird. It seems like every character kind of yeah. gets their own little cutscene. Yeah. It's, it's also cool. weird that like in that same area that where the the guy teaches you magic, you it tells you like, oh yeah, you have um when you get Frog on your team, and he's like, oh yeah, go teach him water magic, and then something's like, hey, you know water magic, want to try it out on me? Cool. And then he just immediately wiped my party <laughs> <laughs> without me being able to try it. It's like oh, okay. Hey, cool get out and then so now all right well i guess frog has get water out. magic doesn't know how to really <laughs> use it so i guess i'll just go back out there go slurp your wounds yeah. boy uh, so do you do you have to take every party member to him yeah okay yeah. but obviously so, it's like robo is funny because it's like well robo you're not a human magic doesn't work but basically you're like dark power i guess, yeah, I guess. and then for ayla it's like weird. well magic wasn't invented yet so you can't use it yeah. <laughs> like, so oh, does man. ayla she never does she ever get new weapons or is it always her fist? I don't know. Because I, fa- I unlocked something that kind of sounded like a punch, but it ended up being for Robo. Robo. Oh, sure. And I was like, unless I mi- like misremember, I, I think she just always punches everybody. I don't know? remember. Uh, also, in her cutscene, did it seem like it was supposed to, like, Chrono seemed really infatuated with her, right? Oh, yeah. And which is like, does that... Did that ever sort of surface outside of the that cutscene? Like in the game, did it feel like everyone's like enamored with her, or like it almost felt like the other way around? I mean, there's so much talk from her about like me love Chrono because yeah. you're big and strong, and then Kino's like, I love you though, Ayla. It's like everything's like this weird yeah. prehistoric <laughs> love. <laughs> Chrono's just yeah. dead eyes, just yeah. staring straight ahead. So it is weird that they made that decision. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. His hearts, or his eyes turned into hearts. And, yeah. Uh, Did you guys get the version that I got where, like, as soon as she comes in, it starts playing Careless Whisper? Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was up with that? I don't know. Yeah. It's weird that Square licensed that song just yeah. for that one cutscene. I also, I also like when the pterodactyls fly off. This might be a later cutscene, sure. if I remember correctly, where it's like Chrono and Ayla. And then, like, the third pterodactyl is like, eh, it's just kind of a shadowy figure. Like, we're not going to animate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who could it be? <laughs> Fill in your own blank. Uh, Dutch Slayer says, hey, I love the fact that Ayla is a strong character who does not take any S from anyone who's around her and is well-respected among her peers. Even though she might not understand the world around her that much, she understands that great characters and strong personalities make for great people to trust and be around. Well, I, I didn't even take it as much as, like, oh, he has a strong personality. I just thought, like... Chrono is physically strong and capable, yeah, therefore yeah. I'm into it. In, yeah. I'm into him. Uh, I, yeah, I guess I, I like Ayla quite a bit. I, I thought she was a fun character, but like that entire uh, like prehistory thing, I was just like, I was just my mind was just clouded with how does this work? This this is like the most Flintstonesy like <laughs> nonsensical version of the path where it's like, okay, we have we we know English or some some common language that people still speak, uh-huh. but we speak a very staccato version of yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, the dinosaurs rule the earth. Yeah, but we still have like the society that has sprung up that has like similar tones and then it's like oh yeah by the way this, the basic weapons we still use are you know there's still swords and guns <laughs> and robot arms like robot the, arms. the, 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 the arm, way man. that like that 
ties into the game is like was the mo- was super confusing and kind of like you know it may be corny but also kind of fun ways i like i like that they changed the um the structure to okay well you can't just give these people gold so you have to go out and find yeah. these different currencies yes and combine actually, it i'm like yeah. this is gonna take forever and it's like oh you just talk to the guy on the left he tells you exactly what the combos yeah. are right. which is nice that was the only bit of grinding that i did is i went back i think after i got frog yeah and did some grinding just to make sure i could get and him a good and helm it or also whatever. just completely breaks the economy at that point mm-hmm Right? What do you mean? How so? Because you can just keep buying those items. Oh, sure. And and like oh, and sell them back. Yeah. yeah. And I went to the the hunting grounds for like fifteen minutes and had and had way more like resources than I needed. And so after I got you know like armor and weapons for everyone, I was like, well, I still have all this stuff. So I just bought like. 15 extra swords and then immediately sold them for like a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, right. Did you end up been struggling with money though? So yeah. I guess Did you go to the hunting grounds and fight those like blue enemies that only appear when it rains? Yeah, I, oh, I, I, I did one or two. Okay. But, but I think the reason like you get something from them the the first time you beat them. Yeah. Like you, you, you chase get, after them. And you, you get, get a ton it. of like TP for, for fighting yeah. them as well. So like I I fought like I think there's three of them that I found and then I basically had all, all, all the parts that I needed to buy all my weapons. And then yeah. I, yeah. like that felt like the closest to grinding I ever did, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. But I like, did some accidental grinding in prehistory mm-hmm. where I went there too early and like went to that mountaintop and I was like, oh, yeah. well, I'm not supposed to be here yet. So I left. And but then, I was like, so confused because like, oh, I see the sparkle in the sky. Yes. Something happening here I, yeah. I i went up to the that peak like twice assuming that's where i was supposed to go next and i was like well all right i guess i'm just over leveled a bit that's <laughs> that's fine i'm happy with that yeah. before i forget your point uh serial uh nobby buckles right so says so ayla named lavos using lokian words la and vos it was like fire mm, and big yeah, or something that, yeah. which means she and the rest of the ioka oh, i'm sorry ioka tribes speak a different language so how do they learn to communicate with the party yeah. <laughs> like what is happening here and it's, uh, yeah. it's so stupid it's that idea of like well they speak english but it's like you know dumb english because it was a long time it's ago caveman right, english. Yeah. we all know caveman yeah. english yeah. it is like i had a tougher time than i expected trying to follow some of the beats of like i guess i get the big picture stuff but what are they trying to communicate with kino here like what are the what are the twists and turns using this insane caveman language mm-hmm. uh, beaten down brian says when you first meet ayla she comments on how she likes strong people and because of your strength in battle she invites you back to her village when she asks you to prove your worth so you can get the red stones from her i was fully expecting a battle but it really tickled me that the that when the things she challenges you to is a soup eating contest <laughs> also soup is beer right because everyone sure seemed hung over the next morning <laughs> yeah. did uh so that section where you're at the party yeah. Like, it's just a matter of time before you can leave, right? You just need to kind of keep talking to people. Not sure. Was there some way to instigate exiting? Because, like, I was, I couldn't figure it out, and I just kept talking to Luca, and she was like, just drink, man. So I drank, like, a ton. Like, mm. I just like just because I was like, maybe I just have to get soup, really drunk you, and pass mean, out right? in the soup. You got real messed yeah. up on soup. And I, like, I, I was like, is this, I don't remember this. So I was like, maybe this is how I leave, is I just get Chrono really messed up till yeah. he passes out, and then the next morning starts. But it was like, so I drank, like, Entirely too much. Yeah. You ever Chronos had so much soup. Campbell's chicken noodle soup that you couldn't <laughs> wake up the next morning? <laughs> I, oh, I've never eaten Campbell's chicken soup again. <laughs> I don't even remember them calling it soup in the in the DS version. They didn't call it beer. Like they called it like I don't know. I don't remember what they called it. Like, yeah. uh, Robo has some line about like, oh, there's a lot of impurities in this liquid yeah. or something like that, mm. which is fun. Robo's dialogue is a lot funnier uh, than I remembered. Yeah. But I but I did also like that it it tied back to those first couple things that you did at the fair. Right. Of, you know, mm-hmm. like you you do the dancing and it's the yeah. same song for some reason. <laughs> that's like carried down. down. For, yeah. 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 And, and then you do the drinking contest and it's like, oh. Okay, I yeah. love Marl during that sequence. I love just how game she is for any party. It's like, what's well, this? Everyone's dancing and getting drunk. Let's go. Like, uh, it's just so cool. I didn't have her with me at the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Hugo uh, H2P says, I love how stuff from the Millennial Fair is still relevant this late into yeah. the game. It's like the game respects itself. From the music of the Village Feast to the drinking mini game being a training ground for the soup drinking versus Barb. That's how I named Ayla. Only character I changed the name of. Barb. <laughs> it's a good name for it, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I love like yeah the idea of them saying like let's keep this music around for generations mm-hmm. to come. Sixty five million years of, yeah. of passing this song down. Dun, 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 it dun, is a good song. Uh, so. James Martin says I just love how the prehistorical section is basically just the Colonel Trigger version of the Hangover movie. <laughs> this is my first time playing that. And it surprised me when I found that hilarious of a moment in a Super Nintendo game. 
Yeah. Uh, also, Zach Gilu says, Ayla is undoubtedly one of the funniest characters in the game, but her empathetic nature makes her one of my favorite characters so far. She's the only party member who expresses sympathy for Azela after you defeat her. It's amazing how Hori and the other writers were able to make a character who talks like a caveman seem fully fleshed out, not just a cartoonish character. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think Azela was one of the biggest surprises of this section for me. Just the weird reptile leaders like, oh, the stupid apes, they must be killed. And then you fight the big, you know, black Rex. I forget robot what. Robot T-Rex. Felt like he was like a robot. Summon robot T-Rex. React, T-Rex. They just use whatever uh, number of concepts. Well, we summon him, but he's like a robot. <laughs> right, I'm right. right. him. I'm control. I don't know. And the first time you're going through the cave to confront Ayla, like that's the first music I heard where it's like, oh, this has to be Uematsu because it mm. sounds just like Sephiroth's music. Um, but then when you kill Azela, and here we go. Um, Dun, 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 dun. But just the weird beat of like, hey, we tried. Mm-hmm. Tell everybody that uh, we really gave it our all. Uh, Chase Klein says, I thought it was interesting that Azela had the ability of psychokinesis during your fight with her, which implies that the reptites were far more advanced to the point that they had mind powers. Mm. Uh, yes, that is absolutely true. Okay, Jared Natsis says, quote, win, live, lose, die. That rule, no one can change the rule. I love this line from Ayla. It really comes to bear in the subsequent dungeon. Tyrannal Lair is to defeat Azela and witness what is essentially the extinction of an entire race at the hand of Lavos. When Azela m- remains with Tyrannal Lair and says, take care of this world. <laughs> it gets me every time from a survival of the fittest angle. Azela is giving up the world to the new dominant race of, quote, smooth-skinned apes. But when she says it to your group specifically, you really do intend to take care of the world more than she or anyone knows. Yeah, isn't it implied that they were sort of like they that they sort of knew about La- or had some involvement with Lavos? Is that did I just misinterpret? That? No, I think I, it see. I took that to mean that Azela was like seeing the sparkle in the sky, like the red meteor. They knew Lavos was coming, but they saw it as like, please let that hit just to wipe out the apes at this mm. point because they've already lost. Mm. That's what I took Azela as, as getting at. Is like, well. I am the leader of the reptites and my Tyrannosaurus yeah, He tells Rex it to died. hurry up at some point, right? Doesn't he like, he's like, it's got to con- hurry up and crash, you know? Yeah. Right? Does he? Uh, Bob Yule says, maybe this gets explained later on, later on, but when you get the pterodactyls in the prehistoric times, you're on top of a cliff looking to the evening sky. There's a distinct twinkle in the sky, just on one spot on the top right screen. Too small to be a sun and only one is there, so they're not stars. Yes, Bob, I bet that answer was <laughs> given to you later on. Anyway, when, when you jump on those pterodactyls, I timed it. It takes about uh, 10 seconds to circumnavigate the whole entire globe. <laughs> pterodactyls are fast, they're man. Fast, was, man. <laughs> was there a point to that besides just flying to the one location that you can go to? Because it didn't seem like you could go anywhere else. There was a cave. It's called like the Sun Cave yeah. or something far to the east. Oh, and yeah. there wasn't anything there. in there yeah, yet. It, it, doesn't Something, seem you can do it. Which I don't remember what that is. Like, yeah, I don't remember either. Coy. I don't know if you go back there later or what. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Edgar Vasquez has a very Ooh. specific point. Mm-hmm. We want everyone to be specific with their feedback. This mm-hmm. is the most specific feedback we got for this entire discussion. Edgar Vasquez says, At 1.5 hours in my into my playthrough. <laughs> no, he says, <laughs> Why does the name Chrono not have the H? <laughs> but no. Uh, Edgar Vasquez <laughs> says, What's up with the huge jump? Azela does just to go behind her throne before you fight her. <laughs> Do you remember that? Like you encounter her throne uh, and she was like, Brrr, and like jumps behind her throne. Got those reptile legs. Oh yeah, those Gotta hot reptile them. legs. Absolutely. You also play the uh, uh, six million dollar man sound when he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan McCormick says, "Well, I don't downright hate it. The prehistoric era has always been my least favorite. I felt like a lot of the areas you go through there are fights on top of fights and traversing there gets really tedious really fast." One thing I will give credit to in the prehistoric era is for the first taste of alternate overworld movement. Flying around the pterodactyls is surprisingly fun as I wish there was a little more to do with them. Yeah, in terms of things getting tedious and stuff, like I was so worried when I saw the location called the Forest Maze. I remember mm. there's a, like Lost Woods, mazes, ghost mm-hmm. houses. I don't want any of that stuff. No good. Uh, but then I went there and it's not too bad. Actually, I really liked uh, just like how the grass texture was like slightly animated in there. But then it's like it got a little confusing for, okay, What's the upper layer? What's the lower layer? But for something labeled a maze, I was yeah. I was impressed that it, uh, it wasn't more. Annoying. Yeah, I was relieved how fast I got through that. So, yeah, oh, okay. It did take me an embarrassing amount of time to find the first ladder. Right. Like I was just oh, the weird like I, was, I went in there and like looked around. I was like, is there something? And I left and like came back and it was just like me sort of like scraping Chrono along the side <laughs> of the bottom. I was like, oh. And then you like went into that animation where he starts yeah. climbing. And I was like, oh, those red l- vines or ladders okay all right yeah i do like how there's a different like treasure chest in each era yeah. like the look of it 
is different every yeah. time. Yeah. It's yeah. a fun little twist. Whiskey Jack says, hey, can we talk about how good the dungeons are in the game overall? As soon as the party sets foot inside Megas' keep, the eerie atmosphere filled me with a sense of dread while exploring the castle. Then we go back to 65 million BC to free Kino and some villagers held prisoners inside Terrano's lair. This is probably my 10th time playing the game, and I still get hyped to kick some reptites' butt mm-hmm. by that rock song. The fight against Azela and Black Terrano still feels exciting and is challenging enough to keep me on my toes. What I like most about the dungeons in Chrono Trigger is that they feel like they're the perfect length. They're just long enough to keep me... To, keep, to give me a feeling of accomplishment once I beat them and they don't overstay their welcome. There's very little backtracking and the enemy always reward a proper amount of XP that completely removes the need to grind. In short, Corn Trigger is a perfect example of all killer, no filler. That's why I still consider it a masterpiece 25 years after its release. Yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, yeah, we, I think we talked that. about a little bit of like the, the backtracking in, in the Azela part specifically. But other than that, yeah, they, they feel less like dungeons in the traditional sense where it's like, you know, it doesn't feel like dungeon crawling. It just feels like a set piece. Yeah. More, more so yeah. than like an actual like, well, now you're on the 10th floor, you mm-hmm. have to backtrack or whatever. There's like, it doesn't feel as puzzly. It feels more like these are the encounters we we came up to have you deal it with. It knows right? what's good in game design, which is not packing in stupid puzzles. <laughs> I like some and, puzzles. and it also, that comment makes sense for coming from him as like the 10th time he's playing through it. Yeah. I think a lot, the reason we are, are all feeling kind of that sense of grinding every now and then is because we're playing it for the first time or we've forgotten yeah. you know, right. what it is. And so if you don't know where you're going, then it, it takes a little yeah. longer and exposes yeah. you to some more Also, I think so. Did yeah. anyone have, like in the Black Tirana fight, did anyone have that an issue where you couldn't see part of the fight because like it was like the interface was always at the top where you had to see the damage numbers for both Azela and the the Black Tirano, so I never saw how much damage I was doing. So oh, I, had to, really? I was kind yeah. of doing it kind of by feel. It's like, I think he says he's weaker now. He's counting down. It said he lowered his defense. So I guess now I can hit him with, you know, the the techs and like the, the, the team up attacks. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully this will kill or whatever. But like for the most, for most of that fight, I could not see what I was, how much damage oh, I was no. dealing, which and made that fight harder. Terrible. than Azela was like blocked by UI stuff too yeah. for me. I, but you guys have at least where the UI gets a little relocated to the bottom screen, right? Are you just selecting attacks on there? Some, it would occasionally, like, relocate to the bottom, but, like, anytime I was attacking it, it was, like, I was even just selecting which target was kind of weird because it was obfuscated by the interface, which mm, is weird. Sure, yeah. Uh, mm. Mtolan85, who's the Chrono Trigger expert and also a new supporter on Patreon. Thank hey, you so much, thanks, Mtolan. Mtolan. It, and it's very fun, too, to see Mtolan, like, jump in. I hope this isn't annoying for other people. I appreciate it. He jumps in and, like, replies to a lot of people when they leave their question or their comment about Chrono Trigger because mm. he just is an expert on this game. But he says, hey, there was a dungeon that was cut from the game between Magus's castle and the Tyranno Lair, but it featured a song called Singing Mountain, which is an absolutely beautiful piece of music and it's still featured on the original soundtrack. You should mm. check it out on YouTube. Thank you for that hot tip. Uh, Jared Natsis says, Nisbel 2 has a great line, Azalea's in the back. Then when you pass, he says, quote, I mean, you have to go through me. What did you think I was flexing and looking all intimidating for? I love Nisbell. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that a yeah. favorite of yours as well, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. It's a good line. Kyle, uh, did you love Nisbell? I love Nisbell. Do you love him? Oh, good. Also, Chase Klein wanted to point out uh, that he liked it a lot when you go back to the prehistoric era, um, that that chapter is called Forward to the Past, which is a great Back mm. to the Future reference. <laughs> Very good. Oh, there are there f- Back to the Future references? I don't know. Ah, uh, Maybe. Other than, I guess... Marl just it's kind of, away. Yeah, yeah, not feeling great or whatever. For Nisbil specifically, did you guys, like, okay, so every time you attack him, it says, oh, his strength, his, he, like, he's being attacked, so he's, like, his defense is going up. Right. I felt like I was, like, what was I supposed to do? Uh, lightning to reduce his. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that's what I ended up doing. it, I think. But, like, the fact that he kept, like, okay, now he's he, he has more defense, he has more defense, he has more defense. Like, it felt like, don't, it felt like a don't attack me thing, but mm-hmm. every anything I did that wasn't lightning was, like, lowering his defense. Right. It was, like. Raising his defense, so I thought I thought I was missing something, but I don't know. But I guess no, I don't yeah. think so. I'm totally with you, and you know we talked about it early on too. But just that idea of it seems like there's a lot of ways to take advantage of the combat, but maybe I'm just missing the hints. But I don't really have a good indication. Like burning the fire thing, maybe it's just oh, if you're clever, you figured out no big deal. I didn't. I don't have Luke in my party, so it was no big deal. I could just blast through those. No, idiots yeah, just by the, banging that on them. specifically was just one of the one of the situations where an NPC randomly tells you like, right. hey, if you ever meet trolls on on your, uh, oh, not me, mm. someone else's mommy's calling. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, want a Mikey? <laughs> 
Yeah, but but just like laying it out very, you know, matter of factly. If right. Like, if when you see these enemies do this specific thing, yeah, and and I think that is a situation where. I'll, you know, like who's actually who, who has Luca in their party ever? What kind of you know, freak. I kind of want. I like. I, I like her as a character. I know. So I feel guilty for not having her in my party. I'm totally. It with is you. such a murderer's row of characters that yeah. I feel bad every time I have to switch someone. Hundred percent. It's just like, like yeah, she doesn't. Uh, she doesn't fulfill the role. Like she doesn't have healing as far as I've uh-huh. been able to train her up. And I feel like Robo and um, Frog also have like they can serve a dual purpose as like being the the damage people, but also having heals later yeah. on. I'm I'm like actively trying to. Have have a unique party mm-hmm. just because like it, just to mix you're it up you're playing the yeah. worst version so also yep. have, the, have worst the worst party, party. Well, hey i don't <laughs> know lucas served me pretty well through this whole section fire was mm-hmm. very handy. i guess so a lot of fire sword going on uh chris bartlett says i'm not a huge fan of marl as a character but i've always been using her anyway because she has haste which is always a godsend in jrpgs mm-hmm. uh to speed up mm-hmm. combat yeah, yeah yeah and it's it's incredible i i kind of am in the same boat of like i would love not to use marl but it's like she's just so helpful and it's like okay i have Obviously, I'm using Frog, but his heal, it's a little bit weak right now compared to hers. Maybe eventually it'll get better, yeah. right? Um, let's see. Peter Fontana says, I felt like I was being stuck with Chrono and Marl taking up two slots with a rotating third, which is making the combat slightly stale for me. I really wish there was a fourth party slot. Yeah, mm-hmm. or or not being able to switch it up at all because I think you have to have Frog in your party for when you're going through the all the Fiend Lord keep stuff. And then you have to have Ayla in your party when you're doing the BC stuff, right? Some of it. Yeah. For that, there are certain sections where right. she'll be like, hey, we have to go together. And then it'll cut to the party screen and you, two of the slots are already taken up. And yeah, yeah Marl's kind of like the, the key support. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, I already know what I'm going to do. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so who are you guys using then? I have, I have Roba and, and Luca. <laughs> well, I've kept oh, Chrono in my yeah. party. Smart. Uh, yeah. Smart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I've mostly been using Marl or Frog as like because now that um, Frog has healing, I think I I can use those two interchangeably. But ev- everyone else is kind of like, well, I guess you'll be the f- filler third when there isn't like a requirement. Right, right. Uh, Melissa Dora says, uh, "Who is your main damage dealer and your main healer?" Robo, I feel like is fantastic. I got to like Megas's castle where like his attacks are technically dark, so they would like heal everybody, which is a problem. Um, but just having an enemy, and I don't know if Luke is the same, where it, like he'll attack everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does Luca have some like this yeah. flamethrower attack? Like yeah, a, it's a yeah. broad I, swath. I was referring, or I was uh, mm-hmming to Robo because yeah. I I leaned on him through as much as I could until they made me use Frog, just because of that the laser attack that attacks everyone laser on screen. screen. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, um, Melissa Dora says, "Side note: the music in Medina Village is totally Narsha's music from Final Fantasy VI." So that's probably another Uematsu track. You guys give uh, I just give all the power capsules to Chrono, just because like since he's mm-hmm. yeah. permanent. I do you know? too. I've somebody give, yeah, somebody recommended like saving those till the end to try and even out your team a little bit once you know who's going. To, but I've been doing the same thing. I'm just like I'll just overpower Chrono and not worry about anything. Yeah, else. I think I did give magic to Mar- Luca because I kind of had mm-hmm. her. Well, I'm just like like I said, I'm trying to mix it up a little bit, so I'm like yeah. keeping Luca around. I like but... that you have the the buddy buddies there with Robo and Luca. Yeah, yeah, they're friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Chris Bartlett says to follow up on last week's discussion about what exactly weight mode does. It pauses everyone's active time bar gauges when while you're choosing and targeting targeting a tech or an item. It does yeah. not pause when targeting a regular attack, which yeah. is l- not super helpful well, ultimately. <laughs> but I love it. I but, turned yeah. it on immediately. Yeah, and you also have to have it that way because there are those enemy, you know, those bosses and stuff where it's like I specifically have to wait. I don't want to attack him now, and so you. If you just go back to the main menu, your your other guys will fill yeah. up during. Like that. I, right. I made a lot of use of that during the Magus fight because he'll be like, okay, well if he's attacked by this thing, he'll switch affinity, so I want to wait to cast lightning on him until after he's like switched his resistance, so I can actually hit him with it. So yeah. like that, so timing, okay. I think that like that's been like the maybe my favorite fight so far is because you have to be so active with when you use specific attacks, and mm-hmm. it felt like the best use of the combat system so far. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, Grizzled Gaming says maybe I've gotten softer over the years, but some of the bosses are kicking my butt. I think I've died to every major boss at least once, but Magus just continued to destroy me. I knew what I needed to do, but I couldn't stay alive long enough to do it. I think it's the, a Kylo Ren quote. I mean, the sprint to get to Magus also can deplete your potions and stuff. There's not really a good opportunity to refill those. So, like, I think, yeah, I, I had some trouble. I think I died once, which so I didn't do too badly. But yeah, uh, same yeah, here. And also, it's a weird 
thing where it doesn't cut right to the title screen. Like he has a little animation before it fades back to the title screen, yeah, just yeah. with Magus, which is a little bit different. Which that was a moment of like, was I supposed to lose here? But, yeah. yeah but I remember like having such a tough time the last time I tried playing through Chrono Trigger, um, like 10 years ago or so, with the Ma- Massa and Mune fight. And so it was weird when I got to that one and I was like, oh, they're a piece of cakes. Like, oh, that's right. They fused together. And I think I might have died once. But overall, like, I've been realizing, like, oh, I'm actually doing all right. Like, I'm not yeah. beating my head against a wall at any point here. But it, then I went back and looked at all the footage I captured. And it's like, oh, I'm actually dying. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm dying You're just maybe not like, yeah. minding, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. like half the bosses I'll lose yeah. to on the first time or something. Yeah, that Masamune fight was tough for me. And also, and that I think that was the point where I got really annoyed just because you get a save point as you're going through that forest area and then you immediately fall down a ladder so you can't get back up to it and you have to go through a bunch of fights with those stupid you know like wooden hammer guys and so I switched to Luca to do those and then I walked into the cave and had a conversation and didn't realize I was kicking myself into a boss fight at that point and so then I didn't have my healer Mm. and so then I got decimated by them oh no but but that was that was also one of the first boss fights where I was like okay this is cool because you actually have to consider when you're attacking and kind of hold back at some points and right yeah what are your guys' go-to moves because like around that era it was like cleave and ice tackle Mm. it's just there's certain moves that's just so satisfying like wait I'm like Cracking a thousand with these, especially mm-hmm. with the triple attacks, is where it's just like, oh my god, I will just beat this as many times as I can. Uh, I, so I think that for me, the hardest fight has been like the, the I don't remember what her name was, but like the lady who he, who can confuse your allies. Mm, I don't. Sure. Re- she was like the she's like one of the two lieutenants for Magus, okay, basically. Fleet. Yeah, yeah, fleet. yeah. She has. A, and we'll get to that. That's yeah, a confusing she, saga. She, she, she was like quote. the she was probably like the hardest fight and. Um, so like after that, I, was, I felt a little bit more prepared. But I think like by the time I had Ayla, I think it was like Thunder Chomp was like my oh, my yeah, go-to because yeah. yeah, it like, does like, a lot of damage and it lowers their defense. And then I think especially with, on the, the T Rex, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then at one point, I had like Ayla, Chrono, and I think Frog on my party. And then I just did like I would do Thunder Chomp and then the X Attack. Right. And that would do a ton of damage. Like I broke yeah. like a thousand. Like, from, from, I guess you guys didn't really have Luca with you, right? Because she has fire sword, where she sets your sword on fire, and oh, you come okay. down and basically do that cleave animation with a fire sword. Oh, nice. I used I used that a lot. Yeah. The thunder chomp one. I think the first couple times I used it, I was like, oh no, because I thought that I was actually right. using lightning on a yeah. like, just like the exact same <laughs> animation. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty useless. Let <laughs> yeah. me just injure my party member. Also, I have a weird reflex. Please tell me I'm not alone. Please, microphone, tell me I'm not alone. Where every time I use a shelter, I get this paranoid feeling because I think I accidentally used two because it has oh. like but you but you and like two oh. waves of healing for yeah. HP and MP so every time mm. it's like wait what was that like no yeah. no no uh, you're alone I think we all understand exactly right? what's happening you guys are smart do. people yes mm. uh, Bob Buell says I love how visceral and cool the lightning rod combo attack is especially in prehistoric times where it does the extra damage it has become a go to for me seeing frogs mass immune is it mass immune do you know Masamune. that thing? Masamune yeah. you know that from Japan yeah so I need to stop him. saying Masamune? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Should, you should stop doing that. Uh, seeing the Masamune... Masamune. I can't. Get Just lodged a little at a time, man. <laughs> Get lodged into the skull of an enemy and then Chrono casting lightning on it and shocking them from the inside... Amazing. Oh, I haven't done uh, that. Yeah, I haven't yeah. done that. Yeah, that sounds cool. That That's cool. Yeah. Also, just when you unlock like lightning 2... It's so satisfying. It's so powerful. Yeah. And now that I have that on him, I might consider just not like not having Robo in the party because uh, yeah, I was using the laser spin to basically clear everything. So now that I have lightning too, I might actually switch to Luca because I like Lu- I want to have Luca in my party. Yeah. Because yeah. she's like my she's probably my favorite party member. But like I feel bad because you go up to her and she's like I I wanted to talk to the guy in the center to tell me where to go, but it's like you'll be talking to Luca and she's like oh don't you need my brain power and I was like no. <laughs> I was, while we're on the topic of Luca, I, I, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but when you bring the stone back to what's his name? The Melchior? Guy. Yes. Does, and did you guys have Luca with you at the time? I did, no. yeah. So, you did or did yeah, not? Yeah, I did. Okay, because like she helps build mm-hmm. the sword. Huh. Yeah, for me it was Robo. Yeah, for me it was Oh, so Robo. Robo does, so someone helps, even if, because like, yeah, because that made the, a lot of sense to me that Luca was assisting. So I was like, I was wondering, it's like, well, if Luca's not here, who's who helps him? But Robo, I guess, makes sense. Yeah, too. Okay. and Robo had like a little thing where they were reading the name for the first time and he like read it backwards. Yeah, like Melchior. Yes. Did yeah. Luca do the same thing then, uh, or was that Robo still for Robo you? Robo was, yeah, because I had okay. Robo and Luca at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, I love that whole idea of meeting Melchior and him being like, well, I could do it with this stone, but no one has seen those for a millennia. 65 like, million years! <laughs> <laughs> so just, to like, what probably feels like two seconds to him, you know, considering the way time travel works, right. to like walk out the door and walk back in. <laughs> with one of those. I love it. Yeah. Very good. 
Uh, let's see. Medina. Could you imagine what that, what that would be like if you were like, well, I would really like to study like an extinct bird like a dodo and he, for, for someone to go, wait, I, I have an idea. And then come back and it's like, here's a dodo that I brought you. I have no questions about that. Uh, <laughs> well, let's go in the basement and look, take a look at this thing. Yeah. But, ever, oh, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, again, I do just love how that kind of sets out your objectives without telling you specifically yeah, that yeah, you have right. to do it. It feels, it feels so much better to be like, oh, I know. And it's so obvious, but you're still like, oh, I know where I can get that. And it's not just the objective updated, go back in time right. to get the stone, you know? Yes, for sure. Uh, we haven't talked about the opening a little bit here of the game. Let's go back in time. And do that. <laughs> no. Uh, Eric Andel says, when going back to the present after your first trip to the end of time, you end up in some monster village. Medina, right? Yeah. And I thought we had done something in the past that caused monsters mm-hmm. to take over, but then you end up in your own town after a dungeon. I was like, oh, was that just me that, that had that misconception at first? Yeah, I totally thought that was the case when you go yeah. back and, like, you come out of the closet, like a literal monster closet, and then, like, <laughs> there's the... The guys are like, hey, what are you doing in, in here? But they, like, it's weird because, like, this game does a lot to to make you empathize with the monsters. Like, there will be that one monster in the who's playing the piano in the bar. Yeah. And, like, this whole village is just like, well, I mean, they're worshipping Magus in this weird, like, when you yeah, walk into the town genuinely square. genuinely creepy. Yeah, like, yeah. that song is, like, super, like, super creepy. And then you're kind of wandering around and you can talk to the uh, the salesman. He's like, I'm not going to sell things to you. And then you can eventually fight uh, him and, like, his bodyguard to make you sell stuff. And then he still sells it at ridiculous rates. Yeah. Like, yeah, you think I'm going like, to give you the going rate? Like, yeah, no. I know. Yeah. And this uh, point, he was like, should I just buy this? Like, no, no, no. Okay, I can afford really it. Really yeah, yeah, maybe but, I just didn't have to and that, But yeah, I love that. That, that. that was such a great bit. That, yeah. yeah, that bit serves no purpose in the game, but it's like a fun, you know, thing yeah. that they do. Uh, at, but then they also like they they do a really good job of making sure that you're kind of like, well, these are people too. Like the, even though they're like fiends or whatever, yeah. that they have. Um, We're fiends. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everyone calls them fiends, or I don't know if they refer to themselves as fiends, but like. Uh, yeah, they do a really good job of like, oh yeah, this is, they're not just like the enemy, they're like mm-hmm. another faction, right? Yeah. Well, also, I think, you know, last time we are talking about like, oh, well, 1080, that's kind of like idyllic, that's where the monsters and the humans are getting along, and then you come back and realize like, oh no, there's actually like this uh, underrepresented class in society, and they're like, we're the fiends, we've been screwed, we should have finished off you humans 400 years ago. Like, yeah. everything always like fuels the next storyline, Yeah. Mm-hmm. but I think it works out really well. Uh, Yaro... Uh, also loves that uh, guy selling stuff, and he says, I don't see that kind of interaction much in games, and it made the world feel more alive and the conflict between the factions to have more meaning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, Beaten Down Brian says, those two imps are remarkably chill about having a wormhole in their closet. <laughs> Feels like something you might notice. <laughs> I just, like, run in there, like, hey, guys, we're just uh, we're swinging we're by. Use, yeah, yeah. We're going to use the... Okay, cool. We got to go teach frog <laughs> magic real quick. We'll be we'll just be in and out. I do it. love that idea of, like, everyone's still like, hey, yeah, where's the gate again how do I get and it's like oh that's right you should go to that random residence <laughs> and jump in their closet yeah. to yeah. go through time again Did you guys does it go backwards that way yeah I think you can yeah you can yeah you got you can go in there because I had to go yeah. through there I was always going someday. back through the cave to get to the other continent and then go up no oh, really yeah. oh, no, that's probably yeah. why I was a little more frustrated too but yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys I like it took me forever to figure out how to get across the bridge which was like that was our first mm-hmm. goal yeah. right like coming back into this section like it just took me a while. Like I was talking to a lot of people, and I I, th- I went to uh, the prehistoric era for a while, and like ended up like that's where I went to the peak and came back down. I was like, oh, I guess we're not supposed to be here yet. Yeah. And then it was like, it's cool that it's there. It's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't mind that, uh, but it did. Like, and then ultimately, you just have to talk to the chef in the kitchen, right? Yeah. And that was yeah. kind of like that was a little opaque to me. Like I it took me a while to get boat. there. Yeah, it's well, just like that weird era before a lot of. Play testing. It's like, ah, oh, you'll figure yeah, it out. And I guess yeah. you would have eventually, but yeah. I, mean, I think, did, like, yeah. yeah, during that entire frog section early on, there's a lot of like, where am I supposed to go now? A lot of yeah. talk about the hero, but what's my next yeah. step there's, exactly? Yeah. There's a little bit there. Like, if I don't know if you guys were being coy or just like hadn't remembered, but it felt like because the last time we talked about the chef and the 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 soldier yeah. it felt like oh this is just this weird side story that has no bearing on the rest of the game but it totally has I forgot yep. yeah totally okay. forgot. I thought Not you guys coy. were just like yeah I don't know it does, seems like <laughs> oh, this weird thing might the come thing. back yeah. and be strangely super important yeah, all of yeah. A sudden. yeah. so yeah. like I, I think it's because I found that earlier on be, when they said like oh yeah we're kind of hungry I, f- I figured oh okay this is the chef but it took me a little while to like talk to the right person to mm-hmm. um, figure that out but I think that was like the one part where I was kind of stuck which yes. yeah. I mean, this game otherwise does a pretty good job of like yeah. telling you Immediately where you need to go, or you can go back into mm-hmm. the end of time and talk to the guy there. Right, yeah, he right, right. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And remember last time we talked about that one guard in the castle who's like, women and their gossip. 
I like that they've turned the tables here and there's that lady in the kitchen and she's like, men are such fools. <laughs> uh, but Christopher Powell writes and he says, hello, uh, CLCs. So I had a few observations going through the middle part of the game. Get a load of this, he says. Mm. In 600 AD, when you have to bring the rations to the soldiers on the bridge, turns out it's beef jerky. <laughs> it's Let's like a see. single piece of beef jerky. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff uh, Links, baby. <laughs> Jeff, do you want to read um, this section in the appropriate voice here? Uh-oh. Talking about how it's beef jerky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that we've got some Slim Jims, we can win this war. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it just me or is this section before Frog impossible without Marl in your party? Otherwise, you're burning through like 100 potions. Uh, yeah, it probably is. I'm, yeah. still, I'm I, drinking a lot of potions. I'm spending a lot of money on mid potions. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm I'm just using the tech to heal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, outside of battle, and then like, oh, I'll worry about. And it. I always love that about JRPGs, where it's like I could be using these. Po- it's like the cheapest thing in the world. You know, it's like I could be using these potions, or I can use my healer again and again, and then just fill up her MP yeah, potion. Yeah, you know? it's a little yeah. trick. <laughs> Eric Angel <laughs> says, "Well, I've been enjoying the game. It hasn't really been emotionally engaging to me." Interesting, which isn't to say that the story has been bad. I'm just not exactly crazy for any of the characters that are plates, which isn't helped by Chrono being a silent protagonist. However, Mm. seeing Frog's backstory Mm. was very well done and it was incredibly well written, especially because I thought it was going to be revealed that Frog was Cyrus. So when it turned out to be Glenn, I was pretty surprised. I don't know if that was an intentional twist or not, but I enjoyed it regardless. I, I think it was intentional. Yeah, I think I it think was really hidden that way yes. too. Yeah. They had I, I don't know if I ever of... thought it was gonna be Cyrus, but oh, really? like the fact that it was Glenn, I think I thought was kind of like, well, who's this Glenn guy? What do I care? And it's like, oh, okay. And I think, yeah, I it's the subtle nod of having Glenn have glowing green hair. But yeah. I guess that's fine. But I think it's just such a smart move as well, too. Instead of Frog just being like this ultimate the hero, prince Cyrus who has turned into a frog. You yes. Know? Yeah. Instead, it's just like I love that even royalty, just on their way out the door, it's like, oh, by the way, Glenn, good to see you. You have a good time out there, too. It's mm-hmm. not like he's built up. He's yeah. such an underdog in so many ways, and I think it makes his character so much more interesting that he's looking up to the person that he's trying to mm-hmm. avenge. Like, he's still scrappy and feels like an underdog even when he was a human. Yeah, yeah. which is weird because I, I want to say that during that huge, like, what, what feels like the the longest cutscene, right? Like, it feels like the most cutscene-ish part of that game. Oh, for yeah. sure. Where I think Cyrus at one point is like, oh, you're probably better at sword fighting than me, but, like... I'm the I'm the knight though, like I'm the one that everyone respects, and he's right. kind of like the secret guy who's like been kind of doing more work or whatever. And then you know Magus kills him or whatever. But it, it it's like the, that was like the most emotionally like resonant scene so far. But like I don't, it's I kind of agree with him a little bit. I don't I don't hate the story, but it's it feels like okay, here's a fun like kind of romp. It doesn't. It's, it's more like cool things, like yeah. going back in time to get the stone to bring to Melkor and stuff like that. Like that's cool, but it's not really like stirring. Yeah, it, it feels like a fun like throw light with the with like some interspersing <laughs> of like really like you know the lava staying like the kind of that undercurrent and you know the the time where you walk into the into Medina and they're all worshiping Magus. Like there are these like kind of like. Um, disconcerting, like, oh, this is like kind of darker than I imagined. Prefer- and then it immediately switches back to like, oh, let's just go have fun in the past or whatever. Like, let's go to the BC section and have this kind of yeah. silly, cartoonish kind of Maybe adventure. I'm just a weirdo, but I've gotten strangely emotional through a lot of these beats, like Frog Story and even like the Frog Zayla, story, the I, Zayla I will, thing yeah. got me too. Yeah. Like, there's been enough little moments where it's like, man, I didn't expect that. Or even like Marl uh, being torn apart and seeing the face of death like there's been enough like weird emotional beats that I didn't quite remember yeah and I I think those kind of things kind of come through on multiple plays too yeah because when I was going into it I was very much fixated on the story and trying to figure out why people like it so much and so those kind of moments kind of stand out a little more but then I think frog is the kind of changing point as that comment was alluding to where it was like okay this is such a well presented character and it's it is such a kind of classic tale of redemption where yeah. you get to see how he grows and then you and I I loved as one of those like very specific things, I love when he falls off that cliff and that the the sprite that they have for when he's laying with like his ass sticking up in the hair in the air and then like his tongue is kind of laying out and he just looks so pathetic. Yeah. And then the hero badge kind of falls down. And he's like, 
oh, the hero badge, you know, <laughs> as after yeah. he's been transformed into a frog. Yeah. Like I, I immediately I had brought up frog in the last episode of like, you're with him like five minutes. And you guys <laughs> yeah. were like, oh man, just, and as soon as I started going through his story, it's like, oh, okay, now I understand why now I know frog is such a huge deal. Also, yeah. I love that you can, on him. Yeah. I, oh yeah. I love that you can <laughs> equip the hero's badge too. This is a smart mm-hmm. move, like increases the crit rate for the Massa yeah. Immune. Um, AMR Hipshot says, right after bringing the repaired Massa Immune, Look at this, I'm a pro. Back to it's Frog. Mune. I'm going to cut... Mune? Masa Mune. Yeah. Masa Mune. Okay. Son of a Masa Mune, back to Frog, <laughs> and a cutscene starts playing, showing Cyrus and some guy named Blen, uh, Glenn. I thought, who the hell is this guy? Only to have it be revealed that Frog is Glenn, and that scene freaking moved me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Hudak says... Hudak. He says, this is my third playthrough of Chrono Trigger, and if I had to distill it down to a single moment where I fell in love with the game, it's the moment where Glenn watches Cyrus die in front of his very eyes before being transformed into a frog. I know it sounds morbid, but seeing that happen for the first time at the age of 12 moved me to tears, and I had to see this journey through. I love, too, that in one of the flashbacks, Cyrus uses a move called Nirvana Strike. I love that like, <laughs> you just get like a glimpse into like his move set and stuff. Well, yeah. I, I think my favorite part of the frog story is that like he is he ends up in this really bad place where he's cursed or whatever and he's kind of abandoned. But then I think by the end of it, it, it feels like he's owned that curse a little bit where it's like, you know, people keep on like, oh, he's hideous. He's like a frog monster. Yeah. But he's like, well, I've be, I've be, like I'm it's like that curse was a gift in a lot of ways because now I'm stronger than I was mm-hmm. before. And like literally that factors into gameplay because he has like the slurp slash and the slurp heal right and so he's he's stronger than he was <laughs> I as like lick a dr- innocence before well yeah. like well yeah but so like but that factors like i've become a stronger fighter because of what you of what you thought was like this weird curse to me i love yeah. that too like it's so, he he's such a subtle twist on so many things that could have been tropey like it could have been the woe is me when can i become human again mm-hmm. and instead yeah i love it it's during the magus fight which is like no like i'm i'm happy this happened to yeah me. so like it, i'm proud of this yeah it's i feel so i almost cool. felt like there was going to be a weird thing where it's like hey do you want me to like kiss you to turn you back into a human you'd be like no like yeah. that's sort of where i thought that was going but like it's, and ayla has that kiss attack yeah that's true i never used it on frog <laughs> don't <laughs> don't uh, yeah but i think that's sort of like i think that that is maybe my favorite part about that character is the way yeah. he's like he, he ends up in this really bad situation, but then he begins to own it. And we all know that it makes complete sense when Ozzy says, you look just like a scared little frog looking for a pond to hop into. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, what? Maybe in J- Japanese that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. The weird thing, too, is how all of Magus' goons remember Frog. It seemed like such a quick moment for them. It's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, Magus, it, it kills Cyrus. Okay, move on. But I love the idea that they're all just like taunting him of like, oh, you came back. Like, he clearly had such an impact on all of them, yeah. which is very strange. Nice. Uh, Cyrus is buddy. That's right. Mark Ramirez says, Frog is still the best, correct? Man, it is a moving moment when Frog takes up his mantle to be the chosen hero of the day and wield the Masa Mune. What a pro. Uh, <laughs> he's been cursed to be a frog, but feels like he failed the queen, so he must still do the right thing no matter the cost. He's obviously the slurping best. Well, have Frog in our party, right? Yeah. Yes, whenever I can. Yeah. Of course. And I love the subtle detail, too, of when you bring the sword back to him, it's not just like, let's go. He's like, I need to sleep yeah. on this. It's just like everything has so much weight with Frog. It's mm-hmm. so sweet. And yeah. even when you talk to him before that, he's like, well, you know, like, even if I did have the sword, I couldn't do it, you know? Right. And he kind of goes through that internal process. Has of, to have some flashbacks yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, stepping back a little bit, too, I, I do like how the sort of, you know, the the rumors of the hero are sort of rumbling around. And you yeah. learn it's like the kid who found the badge. <laughs> yeah, that was so strange. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and then I like, I really liked the threat of talking to the father and him being super proud of his son. And my son's the hero. And then when you know, everything sort of reveals itself and he's not the hero, the father is still like, supportive of his son and doesn't yeah. like is, isn't disappointed he's like ah, I was like you know I got too excited by the whole prospect of everything and I let it get away from me but uh, you know I'm still proud of him you know which I was like that's nice like, just that's everything really in this game nice. is so sweet and sympathetic like yeah, sympathy yeah. is the word that I keep coming back to for all little beats in this story but Adam Wagner says it's worth noting that this game has three strong female party members and only one male human <laughs> <laughs> I also like the movements of the characters and the breathers some of the set pieces require you to take. Having to wait for Melchior and Luca to craft the sword is a great example. Here's a moment that forces you to step back and just exist in this world for a little bit. P.S. One little thing I can't get over is how exactly did Luca get into the castle past all the guards in 600 AD when Marl first disappeared? It was hard enough for me to get past them and I had hmm. Marl to help me out. Yes, that yeah. makes no sense in this game. Yeah. is trash. One other <laughs> set piece that I really like that is kind of a minor thing is that I mentioned last time that there are the, the ways that when you're 
certain di- pieces of dialogue happen, you can still run around the room. Yeah. I think there's one piece where you walk into a room and then p- two people are having a conversation as you're kind of walking in that I think makes really good use of that where you can kind of just kind of have that conversation happen without being like, oh, Chrono, we were just talking about that. Like it, it feels more natural because as you're walking in, they're just having this conversation. Although it does kind of highlight like you're just kind of barging into people's houses and listening to whatever they're talking about without their consent. But yeah. what video games? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, m- removing that aside, I think it's a nice use of that technique. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shuffle Guy has a couple of quick notes. He says there is a heavily armored guard in the market who said he was ready to join the war with the Fiend Lord. Just when I left the market, I heard a stumbling noise. Walking back in, the soldier had fallen over it and couldn't stand up, saying, it's so heavy. Like <laughs> yeah. the armor. Like, I, oh, that, actually, I have that in my notes as well, because it stood out to me as like, I imagine if this was like in a modern RPG, that sequence would be way longer and it would be a little bit kind of cornier than it yeah. than it is in like the Super Nintendo where they ha- kind of have to keep the budget low, right? And they, right. they can't make it this elaborate sequence. Whereas in like, I it's imagine- It's not the in, 3D Lavos in space <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Budget. But, yeah. but like, I imagine in like Dragon Quest Eleven or, or like, you know, Final Fantasy Fifteen, it would be like this thing where you'd have to have a longer, like this would be more elaborate in a way that would- There would be a sure. cut scene, right. the camera would zoom in that on would, it. That would yeah. soften the impact of that moment. Whereas here it's like- for sure. The fact that it feels incidental, I think, makes it stand out more. Yeah. Uh, and then Shuffle Guy also says, when Melchior is repairing the Masa Mune, I got bored and checked out his house. I know this is a child-friendly podcast, and it's weird to say, but we else noticed that all the stoves in the game, they have swastikas on them? I have noticed that. <laughs> I have noticed that as well. Are they it's backwards? Because they could be manjis. I oh. don't know. Uh, Chase Klein, getting to the heart of the matter here, he says, Ozzy tells you that you have to beat all 100 monsters in the castle. At Magus's castle. I counted, and unless you count the nonstop spawning roly polies, it's actually not 100. It's more between the 60 and 80 range. Mm. I was monsters. curious about that. Thank you for well, he's, counting he's, that, Chase. He's trying to flex, right? He's, tr- he's trying to intimidate <laughs> yeah, you. That's yeah. right. We have upwards of 100 yeah. monsters. If you in round there. up, it's 100. <laughs> so before we get to that, like, because you have to split the mountain, right? Yes. Oh, that music. Did I, like, I don't, I, that sort of felt like it came out of nowhere. Did I miss something? Maybe if you checked out the mountain ahead of time. No, but I, that I, was one that I, I, ra- I, I was I went lost. there and, like, you know, there's no, it's just you walk up there. It's kind of like that sun cave where it's like, yeah. there's no reaction or anything. Yeah. I, so I visited that area of several, because I thought that was where I was supposed to go a couple times. And then it's just like, there's nothing. There's just this impenetrable wall. You don't mm. interact with it at all. And at some point, like, once I had the Moss Moon and, and Frog, I was like, oh, that, I'm supposed to go back there. There wasn't like an explicit, like, there's this mountain mountain that is haunted or whatever and you have to go and do it but uh yeah that that just it felt like those two things just happened to click for me it didn't okay. feel like there wasn't yeah. there wasn't organic. some npc that was like well I think there if, might we, have been, if, but we, if we could get through that mountain we i think could get maybe there. it's mentioned one time okay. but i don't think it's ever like made explicit of like if only we had the masa mune to do this okay right. yeah because it you, was i got there and i was kind of like oh I guess we're cutting the sucker in half all right let's yeah. do it, you know? what do you think about with the cutscenes them basically playing the scene twice is that oh, weird? Yeah, I, I did think about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it like would, it'd be a shame to remove the original, yes. but it is always jarring. It's like, okay, now I just have a direct comparison yeah. of how it I, looks. I guess I would rather have it be the way it is. I don't yeah. want them to remove any content. I don't want them to remove the 16 bit versions of those events, but it is right. a little strange of like, oh, okay, yeah, we are doing this twice, essentially. Yeah. 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 I also, like, now those don't feel. I think in the PlayStation area, it would have felt like, oh, this is so cool. Look at this. And they're playing anime. Uh, but now it just feels like because the resolution on those videos is so low and I, <laughs> yeah. I tend to prefer like the 16-bit versions, they don't feel as much as like, oh, this is so cool. It just feels like, okay, they added this at some point. It yeah, doesn't, when, like I'm not super crazy about them. What I era would them. that would have been like post Final Fantasy IX or like around that around, era? Around, yeah. Because I mean, that was Final Fantasy VII sort of started that thing of like, you play RPGs to watch these pre-rendered cutscenes. 100%. Like, that's like why you're playing. Yeah. So I think they wanted to do that in right. a way. And I remember just downloading them on Kaza or whatever and watching them all a thousand yeah. times. Like, oh I didn't my God. know where they were from. Yeah. Like, I was like, why do these exist? Like, But I would say... <laughs> Same thing, man. Kaza. Like, yeah. you know, finding them like Chrono Trigger anime scene. What is this? You know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Also, I, I've booted up that stupid clip of Gato singing in Japanese so many <laughs> times. Because, like, I heard the song again at some point. The dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. I was like, God, I want to hear that again from that weird little Japanese version. Um, Dan Willie says, I happened to notice as I was playing that Megas' 
henchmen are named after iconic rock stars. Ozzy is Ozzy mm-hmm. Osbourne, Slash is the lead guitarist of Guns N' Roses, and Flea is the bassist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <clears throat> this was an English translation touch, however, as the Japanese names are instead condiment puns. Vinegar, mayonnaise, and soy sauce. Mm. Mm. Toriyama in action. <laughs> yep. Now a little deepest dive game with steaks. If Jeffum specifically can guess the condiment associated with each of the henchmen, <laughs> the rest of the crew must immediately salute him as the true champion of the deepest dive. Okay. Should he fail, however... He must instead be scolded as a fake ass gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck and Godspeed, Jeff. Love it. Okay. okay. Vinegar, mayonnaise, mayonnaise, and soy sauce. And which soy is sauce. which? There is one hint for one of them that's very confusing. Um, let's see. Flea was the magic one, right? Flea was the one that was appearing as a woman. Right. Slash was the sword guy. Who says. Hang on, we'll get to that. We'll get okay. to that. <laughs> Mayonnaise, vinegar, or soy sauce. Yeah. I'll say she was vinegar. Flea was vinegar. You oh, fake no! gamer. Did you even get play this? Here. Did you just watch a YouTube walkthrough? Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. You're off the Patreon. I actually <laughs> like video games. <laughs> Patrick Polk commented in saying, I enjoy that the original Japanese name of vinegar for Ozzy is funnier and it makes sense because Ozzy has a line where he goes, Ozzy's in a pickle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's was like that a, your hint? Yeah. I don't think it's anyone was It's a very clear oh, hint. Okay. Yeah. Don't you remember when you said Ozzy's in a pickle? <laughs> um, and flea is mayonnaise and slash is soy sauce, of I course. I almost said mayonnaise. That is such a but, weird thing, including flea in there. Like, yeah. what's, what's more of an honor? Flea appearing in this or Big Lebowski? What? Oh, Flea's in uh, Yeah, okay. well, it's in a number of films, so this is more I know, more but Big unique. Lebowski has to be number one Flea role, right? Um, I think he's... Uh, I think being it's in the, the Red Wild Thorns is probably Flea's number one role. <laughs> I guess that's a good point, so <laughs> yeah. I never thought of it that way. Uh, All right, M. Tolan, 85. Do you know he played the trumpet before he played bass? Is that right? Yeah. And he, he would f- win local contests and lost Was he the Scottie? Shut up about Flea! <laughs> <laughs> Save it for, for your max spoilers on Colonel Flea. Trigger slash <laughs> Flea. <laughs> Will you fix your A key, please? Oh, my it's achy breaky. Up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. The Thank you. Keyboard's broken. Anyways, uh, he was also born in Australia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alan Tolan, 85, <laughs> Chrono Trigger expert, says, speaking of flea, I think it's interesting that they put a not... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, so I need to get back on track, but it's interesting, his read on it. His stepdad was a guitar teacher. Okay. I think it's interesting that they put a non-binary character in the game. Technically, mm. it does say that Flea is male, but then follows it up by saying gender doesn't matter. Despite being a villain, I think it's a surprisingly progressive thing to do from a game from the 90s. I didn't read it that way. Maybe uh, I'm not giving them enough credit, but I yeah. took it as like, he's a crazy bad guy, and so he's dressing as a woman. Don't let it deceive you. Like, I took it as more of like a jokey kind of like... What a weirdo thing to do. I it definitely reads it differently joke. now than yeah. I think it would have read back then. I think sure. that, that totally could have been the read back then, but I think now it definitely like feels like a, a, a like she's presenting as a woman. Yeah. I think and he has and did a, and Tolan has the quote, right? Oh, I, I put that on there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, wrote I down paraphrase that quote it. It was something like would you, would you I have think it I actually have written exact down? One, yeah. It is kind of messed up that like, like that's like the villainous thing. Like, I'm a villain. So I'm not, you know, I, mean, I don't abide by traditional like, gender stereotypes. You know, it's like, oh, the murderer is always the cross-dresser in the yeah. 70s films yeah. and stuff. So like, maybe it is leading yeah. to that legacy, which is maybe a little weird. But, but she, like, uh, she says, uh, man or woman, it's all the same. Power is beauty, and I'm deliciously strong. <laughs> Very sweet. That's my Twitter bio, I think. Uh, M. Tolan also says, and I love this. This is where people leaving comments on each other's comments on the Patreon is so much fun. Because M. Tolan says, as for Slash, there's something I personally like, but I don't have any way to confirm it. But to me, it's implied that Slash and Chrono use the same fighting style. Slash and Chrono both use the Slash, Wind Slash, depending on the translation, as well as the Spin Cut Cleave move. You can even pick up and use mm. Slash's sword after, ironically named the Slasher. Uh, just an interesting oh, yeah, observation. And Eric Reed says, commenting on that, it also begs the question of where did they train? Chrono is quite young to be such a talented swordsman, yeah. and Frog even comments on his ability. Frog, of course, has formal training in the military, which Chrono probably doesn't. And then M. Tolan says, this is true. Maybe there's some line of secret sword masters that have trained in an, ex- in an elusive style for generations, and we just never hear about it because we kill one before he can talk about it, and the other doesn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's yeah. in the, uh, the montage anime cutscene at the beginning, Yeah, there's a scene of... <laughs> Which I don't know, it made me laugh. Of Chrono standing very straight, like like just 
not really in a fighting position at all, just like he's chopping wood with a sword. <laughs> like, it really does not look like a professional swordsman. And then he does it, like, three times, then he, like, has a, uh, uh, a towel around his neck, yeah. and he's like... Ugh. All right, got in my sword in for today and like wipes his forehead. Maybe that was his entire training. Yeah, but it's just like yeah. it just looks like just like someone <laughs> chopping wood. And so that's that's where we got it from. Apparently. Yeah, you know, we never learn about Chrono's father. Oh, so maybe Slasher and Chrono are related. Oh, I'm maybe. updating the wiki after this podcast. Right, <laughs> I do like that it's idea. Also, like that boss fight was weird because like he has that move where he just keeps dancing around the battlefield, but that had no effect on like what I did to him right like I don't think it was like oh now he's here and I gotta do this thing right like I right. It just felt like it's a cool visual thing but not like that doesn't affect the fight at all which is kind of weird just to see this he's bouncing around just just hit him anyway it doesn't matter yeah. like, the little, was, the little no hand will stay on him you yeah. don't have to worry about it <laughs> yeah, exactly. use the little hand <laughs> <laughs> <Crowd eyes. laughs> um, I do like that Robo again I'm just struck by how funny Robo is at some point like after you drop Ozzy in the pit uh, Robo says, I wonder what affliction of the mind that one must have been suffering from. <laughs> Good they, must, they must have been really into data from Next Generation at the time. It seems oh, like some data, I would say. Yeah. Uh, Rich McLaughlin says, when you first arrive at Magus's castle and the game goes silent, that was creepy. Yes. It wasn't as scary mm. as Up, but scary nonetheless. That's a <laughs> callback to the Midnight Show. Also, the Discord channel has been great. I'm loving the amount of discussion and support. Yeah, we should point that out, that if you support us in any tier, you get access to the Discord channel, and there is like a deepest dive channel so that's like this is almost like half the experience and i feel like everybody in there who's like talking even more in depth with each other yeah. is, is a really sweet thing to see yeah speaking of the music i love i love that the battle theme doesn't start it's just this kind of like quiet like just we got to get through this you, you know it, it makes it so much more serious 100 you know? jared nat says nails it he says we obviously know how great the music in the game is but something that goes under discussed is the music cues when certain dungeons have persistent music instead of cueing the battle theme it's powerful when the battle theme continues over multiple over multiple battles, it's exciting. The, big, the biggest example is Magus's castle. When that high string B flat just plays and plays and plays, it's so eerie throughout all the battles. It's so cool. Um, and then he says, finally, I wanted to make sure <clears throat> that you guys were aware that I wrote about the side quest at the end. It's a spoiler-free guide for people to make sure they ha they get to see all the side content in the game without having to spoil things about the side content itself. Oh, cool. Some of the best character building takes place in the side quest for the next section, so I hope people take advantage of it. I'll link it and ping Hansa in the Discord. Yes, please do. Yeah, yeah I, it's, it's, I think it's in the Deepest Dive channel right now, but yeah. absolutely. I ended up finishing a little, like, uh, doing a couple of, like, side things, not, like, major, like, quests, but if you, I think after... You wrap up this entire section in our in Inhasa. I, I went back to the castle to where I think everyone kind of welcomes Frog. It's like, hey, he's a hero now, and like that kind of wraps up. But then mm -hmm. there's also the other thread of like Marl's dad basically disowning her. Where oh, they have I this totally missed that. Yeah. So if you go back to the ca like the castle, I, I don't remember which time. I, and you I have to have see. Marl with you, obviously, right? Yeah. yeah. So they get into this big fight, and it's basically they're like, oh, I never want to talk to you again, and it's like this like kind of. Like, oh, okay. So, the, the, like, the fact that she's in my party is actually having kind of, like, weird consequences in a yeah. lot of ways, which is, it's a cool thing that you, like, that the game lets you deal with the ramifications of, like, all your time traveling stuff, but doesn't, like, make that a part of the game. Like, you can, you, you have to go and seek that stuff out. Yeah, I just yeah. cool. missed that. Yeah. Zach Lowe says that, uh, that you know, when they fight, uh, Marl and her dad, you can even buy the dad jerky, but he just yells at Marl and tells her to leave and never come back. And he says it was a real gut punch for him. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that there's also like a through line of like her mom having died while she was like at some like some point throughout the the storyline of like yeah. of, of the timeline of you, you know, traveling out and sure. like, well, who's there to take care of her? Her sister, like like everyone says, like Marl's sister, I think, was taking care of her. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, but the music cues, I had a weird moment where I went to the lady playing the piano again in the bar and I was like, oh, here's another bit of money to play because I really like that last song you played the first time I went here. And she starts playing the overworld theme for the future mm -hmm. section, like that dong, bonk, just like that weird ambient <laughs> oh, weird. spooky thing. And I was like, this is so unbelievably smart. Like it's the idea that like this is what Colonel's hearing because they're so haunted by what their future could become if they don't defeat it. But then I paid her again and realized, they just play a random song every time. Yeah. So I was like, I'm ready to like kiss this game's ass for like, talk about music cues. Holy cow, that's amazing. Um, but so many people wrote in about this section in particular. Uh, Zach Gallo, again, says, hey, the chanting you hear in the lead up to Megas' fight is super creepy. I was playing the game late at night with all the lights turned off and some of the most effective sound work that I've heard from a Super Nintendo game. It definitely sent a chill up my spine. Nobby Buckles says, so we spent a lot of time talking about how great the music was and that really sets the tone for Megas' castle. That one stinging note with only 
ambient noises as accompaniment is harrowing. I've played through Chrono Trigger at least three times, but every time I get to the castle, I get chills. 100%. Um, Ryan McCormick says, I like that we're starting to finish ages at this point. A huge arc just finished in A-list time and a lot of major things happened in Frog's time before the forced time shift. I love the one hallway in Megas' castle where there are people there related to the party member you have with mm-hmm. you. Oh, yes. Cro- yeah. Chrono's mother and Queen Lean will always be there, but the third character in your party will have their own illusory person. I brought Marl with me, so it was an illusion of her father, King Guardia, but bringing Luca will show Tabin, her dad, and bringing Robo will show Luca. It gives a look into what the characters are thinking, worried about, and it's a subtle little bit of character building. Yeah, and I, I wrote that down as a super specific thing because I had Robo with me, and yeah. so Luca's there yep. as, as like your... Mm-hmm champion or Creator. whatever yes <laughs> but it was also interesting that you know like chrono when you when you talk to chrono's mom there she's like oh you know i'm i was so i was worried sick about you like why are you doing this come home or whatever yeah when you when you talk to luca she she just tells robo don't waste your energy on this which is like a very logical <laughs> argument to make to a robot and i yeah. thought that was super cool absolutely like that part was fun and trippy and out of all the wonderful comments that we got nobody commented on I think my, I don't know about favorite, I love the frog stuff, but one of the most strange scenes that I didn't remember at all, but after you to fight Magus, after you defeat him, and then it's like, oh, the world's crumbling, there's a gravity well forming, and there's just that insane scene where it's like Chrono waking up in bed, and Marl's like, honey, wake up, you're late for work, mm, yeah. and then she just starts going, Chrono, 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 and just like mm. chanting Chrono I, at him. I thought it was a bug for a moment. It's so wild. Yeah. And then that's eventually like Ayla waking up Chrono in the past and stuff, but like, I have no memory of that. And I love that mm. it's like, Lavos being summoned in that era created a gravity well which distorts time which might be a leap into the future. Like, it's so insane. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Like, because you read it as like, that Th- that having had ramifications for like the timeline like, oh you've woken up in a very different timeline where you and Marl are married and then it, you realize it's a dream so it's like a really well like that, that's how I read it is, sure, it, is yeah. it being a dream because then you wake up so like it felt like a effective uh, fake out because you're led to believe one thing because of the context going into right. it and then you're woken up out of it. it's like okay you, you are in a different timeline but it's not what you expected yeah yeah, yeah. also just weird that he Injects Marl into where his mom was before. Uh, <laughs> oh, Paging Dr. Freud, Dr. Fiend. Um, cr- <laughs> never mind. Crater says. You want to give that a couple minutes of silence? Sigmund so. Fiend. <laughs> Sigmund <laughs> Fiend is good, yeah. yeah. Uh, Super Nintendigo. Okay. Crater says, I'm pretty sure that the scene where you walk into Magus' dark chamber and the flames kick on one by one to light the path and reveal Magus floating with his arms outstretched Another and cape flowing scene, right? yeah, yeah. is almost certainly what kicked off my early goth phase. <laughs> that scene alone. Yeah, that scene's badass. Just I love suddenly Magus. putting eyeshadow on like, while the lights are coming. Oh, I've got to go buy a wallet chain. <laughs> Wait a minute. AFI does rule. Uh, Hugo H2P says, I've stopped after exploring a little bit post-Magus fight. I love the ripple effect it started causing, though. Now now it's not a statue of him that's present at Benita Village, but rather one of Ozzy. I guess he survived the fall? I already spent a lot of time exploring and talking to people instead of progressing on the core path, but now knowing of ripple effects like these just make me even more worried about finishing the game because now I will have to visit and explore every era after each story arc beat and not just the one I'm in. I haven't been to 2300 AD in forever, and I'm wondering if I'm missing out on stuff. Okay, so... Yeah, Ozzy's ruling the future at this point, if you haven't... So, checked, so basically they got to Zeal... But they went like back and explored a little bit, like went to different eras. Is that? Is that I, I think he's saying that he's he has been like after every story beat, he goes everywhere to oh, see what's yeah. fucking okay. going on. Yeah, exactly. Because I thought you were kind of like stuck in zeal to a certain degree. I but went back I'm, out of zeal. You did? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Isn't it, I was like, I need items and stuff. Yeah. Isn't mm-hmm. the implication that you can go back and fight Lavos? Because that's what I'd heard that you can fight Lavos at any point after. Well, you here reach we go. The end of time. Dutch Slayer says, "Hey, in the end of time, right when you go there, in the right corner, you have a bucket that takes you to the fight with Lavos at any point in the game." You can just go right to the end boss. Isn't that insane? Yeah. So, like, I have to imagine there's, like, a number of endings depending on when you fight Lavos, Correct. Right? Hugo H2P says, I decided to take a stab at Lavos, and I was surprised at how long the battle is and how it kept going. I thought I'd fight through the attack patterns up to the last boss I beat, but no. Then I'd fight up to the pattern of the boss of the chapter I was currently in. Again, wrong. Spoiler, it's kind of like a boss rush thing. Mm. Uh, so when they spoiled the next chapter's boss, I quit. Not to get further spoils, spoilers and saved on a second slot. And I got to wait until I fully beat the game before I go for Lavos. Mm. So I'm sure speedrunners have figured this out. But can you beat Lavos that early? Like, yeah. is it you can. You can. But it's just difficult. You, yes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I believe. 
Um, anyways, and then Dutch Slayer says, oh, it explains that like there's a whole leveling system for fighting the guy who gives you magic, the little Sepiko guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you unlock better and better items and he levels up with you and there's invisible levels. There's a whole system to it. But he says it's extremely worth it to actually keep fighting that guy. So go fight him periodically. Yes. Okay. Seems to be the... So, the I'm okay. sorry, say that again? So you can f- continue to fight him and he gets more difficult? Here's, and- here's what it is. Um, you can fight him to practice and you should... If you beat him a lot, you get a lot of very useful items. Here's how he works. He has invisible levels, 1 through 9, 10 through 19, 20 through 29, etc. Every time you fight him inside of these 10 levels, you get special items. Example, he is just as strong at 20 as 29, but you are stronger at 29, so always make sure to fight him as close to the 10th level as possible because mm. he's very oh, tough. It's like a radio mm. thing. Always fight him on the 9s. <laughs> That's right. Um, Vigard Bjornurund. I'm sorry. It says no, uh, during the trail chapter, trial, trial chapter, I rescued a guy that was about to be executed. Now that I'm back in 1000 AD, I visited him in his father's shop where he told me why he was in prison and gave me some items. It was a really nice little cutscene that gave some depth to minor characters. That's cool. Yeah, mm. I saved him, but I didn't. Mm. I didn't follow up with him. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yaro says the mayor in 1000 AD is a greedy dude whose kids say that their dad loves money more than them. Remember this yep. lovely chap? Love him. There's a lady in the house in 600 AD that wants a piece of jerky. I got some from the snail stop in 1000 AD and gave it to her for free. Uh, doing so made me tell her that she was going to raise her kids to be more generous generous like me. She told you that. So I checked back in with the mayor and his demeanor completely changed. His kids love him and says, help the needy, share and share alike, thinking of making that the town motto. Oh my hmm. God. <laughs> That's like That's the descendants insane. of That's that cool. old thing. That's so fun. This is a good game, it turns out. Good game. Uh, Joey Markham says... Marl is the best because there's been debate about whether Marl sucks or not. <laughs> I'm pro Marl. I like Marl. But mainly because she's a party animal. Uh, Joey says Marl's the best. She's the moral compass for everyone and never stops trying to help people and stop the evil. I'm certain that without her there, Chrono and the rest wouldn't have believed they could actually save the world. Oh, Jason Emerald Bryan says Marl is unbearable. <laughs> she keeps saying the most asinine things after bringing Masa Mune. To Frog, Frog says something about how strong Magus is, and Lucas says, nothing beats science. Then Marl cheers and says, the good guys always win. No, Marl, we lost many times, is what Jason O'Brien says. Also, he says- Sounds like Jason's issue more than Marl's issue. Yeah, why are you you so mad? (laughs) Uh, Paging Dr. Fiend. Anyways, Jason O'Brien also (laughs) says, how old do you think these kids are? At first, I thought there were maybe 16. Then when Chrono was sentenced to death, I thought, well, I was probably 18. Then an animated cutscene played and Chrono looked like one of those Fitstagram model actors, all muscly, like a guy in his 20s. Additionally, is this all taking place in a matter of days, weeks, hours, maybe years? They couldn't. They could have started at 16 and now they're in their 20s now. I think it's like, because there's like some weird stuff with these JRPGs where it's always confusing. I think like Cloud's like 17 or something. Mm. I see Chrono as... 16 or so late teens right yeah yeah well considering the number of times i've walked back and forth across an entire continent he must be like 60 now <laughs> well remember flying on a on a pterodactyl it takes you 10 seconds no. to fly around the full globe so that it's a pretty true. small place okay. i think that is true beaten down brian the, the, the patreon B-B-B. saint himself he says i really appreciate how the game likes to mess with the players from time to time right at the start of the game when you first encounter guardia forest there are two sparkles on the ground the first is a treasure but the second throws you into a fight and then at Magus's lair they present you with a fake save point in the main hall that again sees you surrounded by enemies it's a small thing that's done sparingly but it's enough to make you a little wary of thrusting future sp- of trusting uh, future sparkles and save points and rightly so as it later turned out in Magus's lair when the save points you have to actually fight yeah. which is very weird kind of uh, similarly like there's the the muscly bouncer triceratops yeah it's kind of similar to that where you can go talk to him and he's like yeah I gotta can't get by and then you can kind of like sneak by well he says like Azalea's in the back yeah yeah, which I weirdly got stuck there because I didn't realize you had to like go beside it's a a very skinny yeah Yeah. Yeah. and then but then he like comes back and he's like oh wait I I was supposed to stop you back there (laughs) right I like like that dude did you guys also get the 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 best joke in the game so far where you get a helmet (laughs) called the Triceratop the Triceratop or something yeah the Triceratop yeah 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 yeah. it's very good I missed that excellent uh Joe Juba, hey, who prefers Joe to go Juba. by Jose Hune, uh, he says, mm-hmm. one thing that's really striking to me during this playthrough is how expressive and detailed the characters' actions are during battle. 
For example, when Marl misses a shot with her bow, not only can you see the arrow fly wide of the target, but Marl also puts her hand to her mouth and giggles at the botched attack. <laughs> or when Ayla and Chrono do their Falcon Strike dual tech, she stands there and does a little cheer as he flies across the screen. <laughs> Everyone cites the lack of a bad guys on the left, good guys on the right battle screen is what makes the fight in Chrono Trigger feel dynamic, but I think these little touches do just as much to make the action come to life. Also, back to the subject of music quick, I think that whenever one of your arguments get heated on the show, you should play the Battle with Magus music in the background. Mm. Um, and uh, we'll do should that. Should we manufacture to, some think, conflict here? Or? Well, we'll have to manufacture a better Wi-Fi signal. I also, <laughs> I also, I also do like that, that Marl has like a, a close-up attack animation where the enemy is right next to her. She'll like bunt them with the, yeah. with the crossbow, which is pretty cool. Does it do the same amount of damage, actually? I think it might. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I think they all have damage ranges, so I don't yeah. know if it does. Well, because that happens, and I'm like... Is that should she have shot? Is that better? Or is it just it's just an animation more than I think it's just else. an animation yeah. more than but yeah, like those sprites seem like they're the right size, you know, like that to have them move around nimbly but also be expressive. Yeah. Here's that music Joe was talking about. You think Triceratopper is the best joke in the game? I put me wrong. <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> Serial, go, go. I'm not though. <laughs> yes, and you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, uh, this is getting too real. All right, <laughs> this is taking me back to my childhood where my parents would fight. Just yeah. seriously, you guys, just stop. I'm not gonna to play stop. Chrono Trigger. <laughs> yeah, my parents would fight in Chrono Trigger. <laughs> just turning up the volume while you're trying to. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, Sean Mills says, "I'm also worried Luca might have a drinking problem since all she yeah. does at the party <laughs> is get wasted and pass out." And encourage you to do the same. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Uh, Edgar Vasquez has a very fun little uh, role playing system here. He says. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. I'm going to say what he says. <laughs> Edgar says, I haven't given Ayla a single order the entire time. Immediately when she joined my team, I gave her the Berserker ring, and she's demolishing fools. Oh. Which, you know, have you seen that item? No. Where it's like, you don't get to control them, but it buffs all their stats. Oh, okay. Where it's like, mm. okay, that's a fun that's idea. Cool. But Ayla is like the perfect choice. It's like, she's a wild card. She's a real wild one. Does she still do kiss and stuff? If because that was pretty I handy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If so you, you can't do like a double team text. Like you can't do like the thunder chomp, which is probably the biggest compromise yeah, I guess there. Not. Right. For me, I do. Like, we should try that though. Like yeah. it's weird that I saw that. I'm like, that's interesting. I'll never use that. But yeah, that totally is the way to go. Right. Uh, Chris Bartlett says, "Does it bother anybody else that you have to waste an accessory slot on the sight scope to be able to see yes. enemy health bars? I haven't found health bars to be very important outside of boss fights, but it just seems like something unnecessary excluded from the interface in favor of this lame accessory." Yeah, I won't unequip it just because, I, I mean, I just like seeing those numbers. I mean, sure, I would be okay without them, but, like, especially with bosses and stuff, yeah. it's like, I just want to know where I am. You know? I haven't had it at all, and it's not. Oh, I love it. It's, it's not yeah, a I, for me. I had left it on Luca and then just never used Luca, so yeah, I'm same here. used to not. Y'all are missing out. I know. It's nice that the other characters level with you, though, so that I could go back to Luca and it wouldn't be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Um Chris also says in that same vein, I think the game could really benefit from a second accessory slot for a little more variety in the character customization. Mm. Yeah, that's one of those things. Like, why wouldn't they do that? Yeah, because yeah. I found like you know ones that I like, and then I don't really like. I don't. I'm not going to change out the sight scope. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but like, sure. Yeah. Uh, They're all rings, and you have two hands. So yeah, yeah, and toes. That's, that makes the, yeah, that's Jace, true. Jason SD, not Robo. Jason SD <laughs> says my favorite oh, item sorry. by far has been the Rage Band. This accessory provides a 50% chance to counterattack. I equipped it on Chrono, and in so many fights, I felt like I had a fourth party member. It's crazy to me that this item is only found in the sewers in 2300 AD, a location that is easily missed since nothing in the story has led you there. Hmm. Yeah, I missed that. Is that, that right? Yeah, nice. I remember we talked about the sewers last time. I was like, I don't know. You, I think you get some stuff. I forgot that that's where you got the Rage Band. Rage Band is essential in my mind. All like, right, maybe I should, for Chrono in particular. Nobody else has the Rage Band? I don't have it. I might have it. I might have gotten it, but then okay. just like was happy with the power boost or whatever I have already on him. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe I'll go equip that. Yeah, 50%? 50 percent. 50% odds that he'll do a counterattack every time he's yeah. attacked. Yeah, I'm not a big luck stats guy in RPGs. Like, I don't often put things into that, you yeah. know, but if it's 50%, like, that's pretty good, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jason also says, in 600 AD, did anyone else notice the blue hat man in the tavern above Tata's house? This NPC is standing in the upper left corner facing the wall. He doesn't say anything unusual, but with his back but with his back turned to everyone, he looks like he's being punished or doing something unseemly. Either way, my eye goes straight to him every time I've gone in. I think I did notice him briefly, hmm. yeah. Blair Witch reference? It's a hot Blair Witch mm. reference, yeah. Before the movie came out? That's right. Yeah. Did you guys find the guy? That was the, uh, no, the real witch. <laughs> oh. a reference to that one. Did you guys find the guy who got hired to track down the rainbow shell? 
No. There's this guy who got he's like a adventurer and he someone hired him to fire the find a rainbow shell on some distant island and he just kind of like will appear in bars and you can talk to him and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. I think I know where it is." Uh but yeah, I don't know. So like I guess once I get the ability to fly, like I can go get the rainbow shell and figure out what that quest is. I don't know. Huh. I Interesting. Yeah. Griddle Gaming says, "I was exploring in the Denodoro Mountains when I fell down the waterfall." At first, I was a little irritated to have to backtrack, but then I found the silver stud accessory, which cuts MP use by 50%, and all was right with the world. I'm curious if you guys have found any must-have accessories that others have missed. Rage Band for sure. I didn't get the silver stud. I no, silver that stud. sounds I I great too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need that. I have like I have that silver stud, and I have like the I don't remember what it's called, like the the ring that gives you 25 percent more HP. Silver earring. I yeah. have that one. So like those are the, like the two that I basically just toggle between party members whenever I, I equip them because they're oh, okay. incredibly useful to have Do like you... have most of the healing spells for like one mana. Do you guys cool. also feel gross using those HP up? abilities or like accessories and rpgs it always just feels like ah it's it feels like this i shouldn't get used to this and i can make a better use of this slot it just makes me feel gross Mm, but i always end up using it um let's see uh triceratopper wrote down m tolan talks about that waterfall area and he says there's actually a really great accessory in that area you can get to later if you bring frog back there where the enemy is throwing rocks at you Mm. i don't know why frog alone would Oh, is that just the hero badge? No. You get that automatically, right? We'll so, go find it later. Very curious. Thank you, M. Tolan, for all your hot tips. Hot tips. Um, let's see. Hugo H2P says, Can we acknowledge how weirdly obsessed this game is with having you and the characters chant and dance? Millennium <laughs> Fair, go dance and slap your butt. Monster Village, let's dance and praise the Fiend Lord. <laughs> Loka Tribe, let's dance and drink again. And I'm sure there's another moment I'm forgetting right now. Uh, yeah, look, it's a happy game. They like dancing. Leave them alone. How did you guys dance at the, um, the, in the past, in the prehist- prehistoric era? Just um, it said just buttons. like hit these buttons. Okay. Cause like that option doesn't come up for me. Like at the millennial fair, when you dance, like on screen would pop up four colored buttons Yeah, and they would just go away when you left. Those buttons didn't pop up for me. In, the, oh. in that area. Yeah, I, don't I think know, it's but, like implied maybe. Yeah. So it just like hopes that you remember from that. So I don't know. Maybe do you have to talk to someone to dance? Like maybe I just missed that. I, I think, think you think maybe so. have to go and like and rate the app on iTunes. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a microtransaction. <laughs> yeah. But is that, I wonder if that's an oversight. I don't where know. Where they just like didn't add that. They added it there for the fair, but didn't, you know, play test enough to remember that there's another area where yeah. you want to dance. I wonder if you're playing know. a terrible version. Gosh, yeah. you know, there's no way of knowing, unfortunately. Yeah. Somebody did send me a message on Patreon saying, tell Kyle to fix his life and stop playing Chrono Trigger on iOS. <laughs> and also, I didn't include it, but somebody else. I don't already. hate it. It's I know. Fine. Well, you're a. Freak. It's a turn-based RPG. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then somebody wrote in saying they're also playing on iOS, and they're really annoyed that apparently there's no options for the volume because they say they were trying to listen to our discussion while playing on iOS, and they oh, couldn't turn down like the game audio. The, oh. They're playing the podcast in the background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Come on. I'll talk they louder. Thank you. Eric Reed says the smoke effect in Laruba ruins and the snow effect in the low areas of 12,000 BC are really impressive. I have no idea uh, what technical skills allowed them to apply these with no slowdown on the original Super Nintendo. I feel like when I played originally, it was on an emulator, and I think on like the old Super Nintendo emulators, you could like hit the one through nine and like turn off different layers. It feels yeah, familiar. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Nasticle. You can't say that on the <laughs> microphone. You don't take um, that. You don't take yes. it out. Joe Halaska says, I love that when you visit Colonel's house, his mom reacts differently depending on who is in your party. Her reaction to Frog is particularly funny. She's shocked that, quote, it talks? <laughs> this is just another example of the attention to detail the game makes that really makes it stand up above its competition. Yeah. I also, one of the things that I wrote down was I love that the that Frog and Ayla have their own walking animation, which I think someone mentioned the movement animation, but that's just such a nice touch that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like just having the other characters follow around behind you is such a normal thing that I wouldn't think twice if Frog just walked on two legs like a normal person. Right. But it, it just kind of reminds you of, it reinforces how these characters are different. And that's yeah, for sure. Nice. Until you go to the overworld. Uh, that's, that's right. Yes. <laughs> but I do I do like on the overworld Ayla's idol animation where she just kind of dances back and forth <laughs> oh, for some yeah, reason. I didn't do that. You should Bob, take a look at it. Do they also Bill. explain at some point later on why she's like wearing this weird like pelt with the tail? Ayla? 
It's the style. There, what do you man. want? The full know. nude codes for Ayla? <laughs> no, I just want to know why. Come on, like Cyril, they never mention nude codes. <laughs> like they don't it's ever DC, talk about not B in D before dignity. I don't know. Yeah, look, let's, you want to timestamp? I think there's a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Buell says, I noticed Chrono has an idle animation, but only on the overworld map. If you don't move while on the overworld map, Chrono's tiny sprite will raise his arms up and have a little yelling animation, like he's trying to get the player's attention. I cannot think of a single other game that where the character gets an idle animation on the overworld mm-hmm. map, but mm. specifically does not get one in the main game. That's a very weird twist. You're right. Um, let's see. Jared Natsis says, when you re-arrive in 1000 AD and go back to Chrono's house, um, quote, Chrono, you had me so worried. They said you were to be executed. Don't worry your mother like that. And then Colonel's mom has no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel's mom is great. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Jason says, if you go to Lucas' house with her and your party and talk with Tabin, her dad, Taban, he will give you special armor that he made for Luca called Tabin's Vest. Mm-hmm. Aiden has a very specific thing. He says, I first played Chrono Trigger on an emulator when I was 12, and I named my character Aiden because it's my real first name. And I was really surprised when the name Nadia came up, like Marl's real name, since Nadia and Aiden are spelled the same when reversed. At 12 years old, I thought the game knew that, too, and gave her a name that was mine in reverse, and I wondered how that worked for everybody else's name. Oh, <laughs> weird. That is good. <laughs> so wild. That's interesting. Um, M. Tolan says, hello, Maxers. I've been thinking about joining this conversation, and this is the push I needed. Oh, there we go. I've read a lot of your comments earlier, but it's all out of order. Like, time. Chrono Trigger is my favorite game, and I play through it once a year. It's my winter tradition, but I wanted to share a spoiler-free tip for the next episode. Soon you'll get the chance to unlock the magically sealed items, like the doors in the future or the blue structure north of the Medina. Those creepy boxes. As well as the sealed chest. Ding, 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 ding. The little chime plays every time. However, there is a trick that can actually get you some even better items, and he wanted to let everybody know. Uh, Go to the Middle Ages, open the sealed chest, and leave the item in there. I guess... Eric Reed uh, clarifies that you examine the chest and the an- and you give an answer to no whether or not you want to take the contents. So you open the chest in the Middle Ages, say no, you don't want to take the contents, then go to the same location in the present and go back to the chest. You will get an upgraded version of the item inside. Mm. Then you can go the- back to the Middle Ages and get the original. You'll end up with both the original and the upgraded version. The chests that work this way, are you taking notes, are in Guardia Castle, Guardia Inn, and two in the mayor's house. The trick also works for a dungeon later on as well. That's very, cool. Very, very tricky. Very helpful. Nice spoiler-free tip for everybody from a Chrono Trigger expert. Uh, I'm amazed so many people are playing along with us. It's it's still sweet. All those comments are great. Um, thank you so much for leaving the wonderful comments on Patreon, patreon.com slash minmax2ns. Also in the Discord, which if you support us in any tier, you get access to. We appreciate it. And uh, if you're watching this, you can listen to the audio version in the future. We'll have more Deepest Dives coming up. Uh, but... First, we have to finish off Chrono Trigger on February 12th. And we'll have the post for questions on February 10th. Does anybody else have anything they want to say about this section of Chrono Trigger? Uh, I'm looking forward to what's coming next because it seems like the Arena of Ages is just Pokemon before Pokemon. Arena of Ages? That, that might be exclusive to the DS version. Oh, is it? I believe so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's in the end of time. There's a, there's a place that you could go into and there are a bunch of people standing around talking about how they've captured enemy characters and they're like raising and leveling them oh, up to really? fight in this arena. Yeah, that's hmm. that's exclusive to the okay. DS version. Yeah, so that, what, that extra amount s- of cruelty is, is yeah. <laughs> yeah. extra. When yeah, I saw that, cool. I was like, what? Did they did they invent Pokemon before Pokemon? But oh, that's it makes wild. sense if it came yeah, I do afterwards. want to know, because I, when I played it on DS, I didn't explore that much. So I, if you should, if you are inclined, I'd yeah. like to know yeah. more about it. Yeah. And it seems like from what people are saying that it kind of opens up there's a lot of side quests and stuff so we'll, we'll post that guide that uh, the spoiler free guide that was written up by the community member there that'll be in the discord if you want to check that out um, but I think that'll be helpful and it's nice that everything from here on out it's going to get willy nilly with exactly what you're doing but it's nice that it's, oh, it's just all lo- leading towards the end mm-hmm. so also if you want to catch up since there's going to be two weeks before the next deepest dive and you haven't started playing Chrono Trigger there's enough time to finish it in that so even if you're starting from the beginning don't be ashamed. Leave a comment on Patreon and we'll be happy to read it if you're bringing up a new point, especially if it's a new specific point. So the next discussion will be focusing on the end, the last chunk, but basically all of Corn Trigger just so we don't miss anything, right? Yeah. And if you get stuck at any point, you can. I'm sure you can just go into the Discord and people will tell you 
what you have to do next. Yeah. We got experts in there. That's right. We all know this game very well at this point. What hour count are you guys at? Oh, that's a good 10, question. 10? Okay. Something? I'm, I'm at 12. I'm at 13. Okay. And I feel I like it's know. been moving so fast. And so how long to beat puts the game at like 20 hours or so? So roughly seven hours could be five to seven hours for the next chunk here. Yeah. Um, that sounds so. right. Something to keep in mind. So we'll have two weeks. Again, February 10th, we'll have that post. But, man, did we miss anything? Took a deepest dive, man. That really felt like the deepest dive of the middle section. I guess we didn't talk too much about Magus overall. Well, his time to shine comes I guess so. Later, yeah. Right, so. He's a cool dude. Yeah. I do, I do like that, like, his going through his castle is such a slog in a not in a bad way though like it is such a build up and you go through so many boss battles that it feels like it would be the culmination of a story which i guess it you know that story arc yeah but then you get to the end and you kind of, you learn that there's something else going on with him and you're not sure what's happening with him and then it just kind of resets and it's like oh no that like the adventure is much larger than this i, I really appreciated that yeah i guess what do you guys think about that um is it 12 million or 12,000 BC? The 12, Inhasa area. I think so. Yeah. I think it's 12,000. I yeah. haven't done anything yet. You just went there. Do you have yeah. any guesses about what's going on there? No, not really. Okay. I mean, it is weird because I I was figuring that was the next part because you told me I was almost there previously. Yeah. And and you and you had also said, well, there's floating islands in the sky. You'll know it when you see it. And then I come out of like a cave and it's like just ice age desolate place. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? Like I'm right. still in prehistoric times. And then I, you know, like warp up to a castle. So, oh. Very I'm odd. starting to think about things, yeah. 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 I'm a sucker for islands in the sky, so I'm excited about where <clears> the game's going. I think I have, I've had one thing spoiled for me just by because my brother played this car- exact cart and I saw his like clear save. So I oh, know, right. I know, I had one major thing spoiled for me there, but other than that, I'm, I haven't got to this part of the game ever. So I'm excited to see what's, what's going on. Yeah, this will be super fun. So stay tuned. It'll be a couple weeks, but uh, we'll make it worth your while. All right. And then we'll announce the next deepest dive after that. Let us know if you have any suggestions. Um, we'll probably go for a shorter one, but still up in the air about exactly what it is. Sure. But uh, hey, that's it. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching and listening along with us with the deepest dive. Um, we have the Midmax Show podcast uh, going live real soon as well, and then a bonus video on Friday that might mm-hmm. involve Surreal shoving things into his mouth. So a lot of fun mm-hmm. stuff coming up for that. God, I hope it's food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Content like this is supported by the community on patreon.com slash minmax. And if you continue to support us and you're here long enough, you can even eventually hear me talk about Breath of the Wild too. Check us out. Thank you so much. 